last year has played six minutes. Scott here from uh, UG Series. Hello and welcome to Budweiser Gardens for this MBL of Canada regular season game between the defending champion Windsor Express and the hometown London Lightning. My name is Marty Thompson. I'm joined as always by Chris Croucher. Chris, London come into tonight's game after splitting an opening home and home series with the expansion Niagara River Lions. And it was an interesting back and forth between the two teams. In the first game, London got off to a really great start. They ended up winning that 122 to 109. The defense could have been better, but for the most part, their offensive effort was fine against a team that was really energized to get their first win. Unfortunately, that energy only doubled when we saw again the River Lions, this time in their first ever home game against the London Lightning. Uh, it was a crazy finish there. Sammy Zaglinski, 15 points in the fourth quarter. And of course, the finisher by Clinton Springer Williams, former London Lightning, uh, hitting the game winning three. You can't really write a script better than that. But uh, it exposed some weaknesses in the defense for the Lightning that we're going to have to hope that they fixed up for this game. Absolutely. If you haven't seen that last second shot uh, shot from Clinton Springer Williams, definitely look it up. Uh, it's well documented with the packed house uh, at the Meridian Center for that first ever home game. Uh, a couple team notes for the London Knight Lightning really quickly. No Garrett Williamson for tonight's game out with an ankle and a hamstring injury. So uh, that's obviously going to affect them uh, moving forward. So we're getting ready for the uh, national anthem. We'll just take a quick break here and a break for the national anthem. London versus Windsor here coming up. Going back to Garrett Williamson, uh, just interrupted there by the uh, national anthem. Uh, he's out for tonight's game, ankle and hamstring injury. Chris, uh, that's a big loss for the Lightning. Well, yeah, he came back. He's a former NBL Canada Player of the Year, or pardon me, Canadian of the Year. And uh, he's already off to a hot start. He had 17 points per game. Of course, that's only in two games, small sample size. But based on what he did the year before, where he averaged almost 20 points per game, that's almost the low end of what we've seen from him. He can He's a very impactful player on this lineup. However, I do think they have a nice replacement in Steven Maxwell. He's been playing excellently in the absent, or pardon me, uh, in the spot that Williamson usually takes up in the lineup. And he's got some of that uh, ability to cut to the basket and draw a couple fouls that they miss, they're gonna miss in Williamson, but Maxwell at only 22 really has the potential to fill that role. And we're going to hear the starting lineups uh, for the Windsor Express here. We're just going to recount them uh, quickly here for you. Maurice Bolden, Raheem Singleton, Shaq Keith, Shane Ross, and Chris Commons. Uh, that's just rounding out the front court there. 
Uh, so Raheem Singleton, obviously a, a big performer there, but there's a couple changes uh, on this Windsor Express roster. Well, yeah, they had a lot of guys who ended up getting great opportunities, and that's what happens when you win two straight championships. Uh, the most notable loss, of course, is Quinnell Brown, who's over in Europe now, uh, applying his trade, and he was a really impactful player for these guys, scoring 20 points per game. Uh, they're going to have to find some replacements, and they're going to have to find them rather quickly. They actually had a pretty great effort out of some of their new players. Uh, Chris Commons, of course, not a new player, but 27 points. And Shaq Keith was able to put up 24 points and 8 rebounds in that first game. Uh, they're going to look to Shaq Keith to replace some of that scoring, but they need to find some depth because they only had three players on the roster with over seven points. They had uh, Raheem Singleton hit seven, and there's a pretty steep drop-off in terms of scoring after those four. Good news for the Windsor Express and Windsor Express fans. If you haven't heard, the news just kind of broke uh, in the pregame here. Uh, but Tony Bennett will be returning to the team, uh, obviously suspended um, after uh, uh, after the uh, the brawl that happened in Game 7 or the would-be Game 7 of last year's final. Uh, it's just been reported that he will be back as of Friday. So that'll be a two-game suspension, I believe, and a, and a fine also attached to that. But massive for the Windsor Express because Tony Bennett has proved it here in London as well that he can be a quality MBLC player. Well, it's pretty impressive that a season-long suspension was appealed and down to two games. Uh, he's a very, very excellent floor general on this team, and he's someone they could really use because looking at their lineup, Raheem Singleton and Adrian Moss are both uh, generally shooters. Singleton can distribute a bit too. Uh, they're going to look to a guy like Tony Bennett to be that guy who can get the ball moving, run the offense, not really looking for his own points, but if he's got the open shot, he's capable of taking it. 100%, and when you look at the uh, London roster, we're just going to quickly uh, raise over that. You've got Warren Ward, Stephen Maxwell, uh, Patterson Capers, and Washington uh, rounding out that roster. Uh, we talked a bit about a uh, bit of this off camera, but uh, Chad Posmus game, uh, against Niagara was uh, quite interesting. 14 minutes, uh, you got a bunch of fouls and it and it added up, unfortunately. And they had some troubles uh, when it comes to rebounding. Um, he's not in the starting lineup. Washington is in his place. Uh, talk a bit about, uh, I guess, that decision from uh, head coach Kyle Julius. Well, Postumus has struggled so far. He had a great preseason game against these guys, so I honestly thought he'd be starting in the lineup. However, I can kind of understand the change. Possum is only averaging seven points, but he is getting a ton of rebounds, almost at 10 a game. But Washington's super athletic, and he's a guy that you like to have in your lineup. Absolutely. We're going to listen in here for the uh, starting lineups for the London Lightning. So again, Kyle Julius selecting uh, to pick a starting lineup that is as follows. Curtis Washington, uh, Capers, Patterson, Maxwell, and Ward. Uh, Capers is one of these players that has really sticked out in the early goings, uh, Chris, really from his, defensive, uh, from his defensive side of the ball. Well, I think Capers is very impressive and very important for the Lightning because of his versatility. This is a guy who at 6'5", listed as a guard, was playing a lot of power forward for the Mississauga Power last year, even at 6'5". This is a guy who can do a little bit of everything, and the Lightning are going to need him to cover a lot of these guys on the Windsor Express. His tough matchup is going to be on Maurice Bolden, uh, if Bolden plays significant minutes, because Bolden at 6'11", is going to be the one at that small forward spot. The only other situation I can think of is they brought Washington in to cover Bolden, because Washington is a very athletic big. 
He's able to move a bit. I don't know if I'd want to take him out of the interior though, so we'll see how they plan on handling Maurice Bolden's size. And we'll also see how a guy like Shaq Keith, who's a smaller power forward at 6'5", how will he do? Because that's another guy I could see Capers matching up well against. Keith, again, one of the better scorers for the Express, had 24 in their game against Orangeville. And he was on the Raptors 905 uh, training camp roster. He's a guy that we know can play. It'll be interesting if that's the assignment Capers draws and really how they use Capers in Washington. Again, this is the first time we've seen Washington in the starting lineup. Absolutely, London beat Windsor here in a preseason game, 98 to 88. That went last week. We'll see uh, how these two teams go in more competitive fashion as we get the 401 rivalry started for the 2015-16 season and we're underway. Windsor in red, London in white. Marty Thompson and Chris Croucher up in the booth. This is Raheem Singleton with possession. He somehow keeps it off of Patterson. The ball drops. He keeps it again. Six seconds on the shot clock. Mo Bolden's open for three, and that's the first three points of the game. Capers got caught chasing the ball a bit there, but that is indeed the matchup we're going to see is Capers trying to defend the 6'10", Maurice Bolden. Patterson with it. Capers. Into Washington, spins, gets a little bit of space. It's knocked out there for Maurice Bolden. Good defensive play. Shaq Keith with it now. Chris Commons at the top. Maxwell matching up here. Here's Shane Ross. And he cannot drain there. Maxwell collects. Shane Ross is another player, Chris, that uh, has definitely impressed in the early goings of the season. Well, it's funny. Kevin Lozell, of course, now with the London Lightning, but Shane Ross looks like a, a semi-replacement for Lozell. We haven't seen too much of him. But from what I've seen, he's got that sort of role as a pass. As we see an excellent shot by Stephen Maxwell. Wow. And he takes the foul. He'll go to the line. So the London Lightning answer right back. And again, Maxwell's going to have to have a big game if they're not going to have Williamson in the lineup. They're kind of similar. They're both athletic wing players and they don't necessarily have a ton of range, but what they can do is get to the basket and of course draw tons of fouls. So Maxwell with an attempt to tie this game up and he will, so three all, 10.51 on the clock here at Budweiser Gardens. Raheem Singleton lugging the ball up here, Patterson playing defense. Commons again at the top. This is Singleton down low. He loses possession, Curtis Washington collects and London quick to move the ball up. Here's Maxwell going underneath Blocked, can't be finished there on the near side. Washington finds Patterson in the corner for three. It's no good, it's tipped out. Patterson collects again, another attempt, this time farther in the corner and it's good. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. The London Lightning pick up a couple of offensive boards. And Tyshawn Patterson, he's been so hot lately. He's able to make that shot, give the London Lightning a nice early lead. Shaquille Keith here, Capers up against. Bolden down into the quarter to Commons. 10 minutes to go in this first quarter, no call there as you saw Keith uh, getting a hand in the face. He takes a three and it's no good, went over top of the rim there. A little bit wild and there's still a bit of time on the shot clock. I'm not sure I like that shot. Warren Ward with possession, he had 31 points in that first game against Niagara. Capers can't finish on the near side, now here comes Raheem Singleton. Dribbles underneath. That's no good, and it's collected here by Warren Ward. Back and forth stuff here between these 401 rivals. Capers can't finish. Bolden collects, and Singleton <laughs> finds Shaq Keith with a little bit of space. He bobbles it. It'll fall out off of London, and uh, the fans get a little bit of the break here from, uh, from action. 9.28 on the clock. That was a, a whole lot of action, not a lot of points. <laughs> um, back and forth uh, certainly seemed exciting, but we saw a couple missed layups there. Uh, a little bit sloppy, just a touch. Mustafa Jones coming in here for London. This is Raheem Singleton, bounce pass to Shane Ross at the top of the key, that's good for two. And again, Ross reminds me so much of Kevin Loisel. They both have a decent mid-range game. They can step out here and there, but really what they're best at is just sort of keep posting up and really just being a pest in the, in the front court. That's Warren Ward on the near side. It's no good. Collected there by Chris Commons on the baseline. Can, Single that, can that be like a game after heat check for Warren Ward? <laughs> after 31 in game one? Jane Ross keeps possession on the fade. No good. And it's collected there by Warren Ward. Uh, he didn't play uh, in Niagara uh, during that loss, but uh, Warren Ward, a Canadian, a Londoner, 
uh, has really come across as being a very talented player uh, for the MBLC as we see Patterson with it now. Washington fakes the pass to Ward, up against Ross. Four seconds on the shot clock, he drains it. That's a very polished big man move right there. Great footwork, trying to get around Shane Ross there, and just a nice finesse touch to put it in. 8.22 on the clock, eight to five is the score. London with the lead. And that's gonna be a foul against Patterson. I'm pretty sure the floor got him that time. It looked a, looked a little more like a slip than a foul, but I'm sure Windsor will take it. Shaquille Keith going to ground there. Adrian Moss subbing in here for the Windsor Express. Shaquille Keith making way. Mo Bolden getting set on the inbound into Ross. Bolden will take it back. Warren Ward marking the former London Lightning man. Bolden can't toss it in, and there's Washington chipping it off. Here's Patterson charging up the, up the court as you see him passing it off to Patterson, or Maxwell, rather. He takes it up, it's no good. And another stop here for the Windsor Express. I would like to see Maxwell just sort of relax with the ball a bit there. I think he threw that up. But again, he's only 22 years old, one of the youngest players in the league. That'll come from experience. Singleton with it, 7.45 on the clock here in the first quarter. Moss off to Chris Commons for three, no good. I saw him sink one from that exact spot in the warm-up, so uh, definitely interesting to see from the big man, but uh, no good this time. Jones with it, misses the two shot, and the fall out of play. We saw Jones hit a big one of those shots against the Niagara River Lions. Not so hot here, but on the other end, Chris Commons, one of his best skills is being able to get himself uh, lost in the offensive zone. And I don't mean that he doesn't know where he's going. I mean that the other team tends to lose him. And he's able to just sort of shift around and get open at the three-point line, and he just sort of pops out right when he needs to make the shot. Adrian Moss missed that three. Theo Davis is coming to the game for Windsor as well. Uh, Shane Ross making way. Seven minutes to go in the first. This is Curtis Washington. That's no good, not sure if that was a pass or a shot. Regardless, Windsor with possession, 7.03 on the clock. There's some aggressive defense right there from the Express. Theo Davis, of course, was one of those guys. He actually played for the Orangeville A's last season, uh, of course, coached by now Commissioner Magley. Adrian Moss with possession. Here's Theo Davis. And that's gonna be a call against uh, Stefan Maxwell. So another call going against the London Lightning. That'll be their second of the game, 6.45 on the clock here in the first quarter, and the Lightning are making a pair of changes. Chad Posmus coming in, and also Kevin LaSalle. So two players who would uh, normally start, who had started previously, now making their way onto the court for the London Lightning. Kevin LaSalle, of course, a very familiar face for fans of the Windsor Express. Former player for the Express, he was definitely the uh, the least favorite player of a lot of Lightning fans, but interesting to see him in different colors now. Off to Patterson, 6.30 on the clock, 8 to 5 is the score. Again, London with the lead here at home. Ball's up, and LaSalle can't tip it in. Nice collect there from Patterson, tries to put it back, and that's definitely a foul on the far side. Oh. 10 to 5, my apologies, goaltending. 6.18 on the clock. Adrian Moss with possession. Mustafa Jones marking him. Commons now to Bolden, finds Adrian Moss on the baseline. He'll scoot out on the other side of the baseline. Now back to Mo Bolden, 4-3. It's a deep three, and he's going to be short. Not sure what that shot was about. Uh, rather ill-advised. We see a bullet of a pass. And Warren Ward cannot keep possession, so Windsor will get the ball back. In time, London making another change. Jeremy Wise coming into the game here again for the London Lightning. 5.57 on the clock, 10 to 5 is the score. And we're getting set here for a media timeout. So London Lightning off to a good start. Some back and forth stuff from both teams here in the 401 rivalry. It hasn't been super uh, perfect or precise yet so far from both teams. They're kind of feeling each other out right now. Windsor, a very different team. London, kind of unfamiliar. I know they played that preseason game. But a lot of things can change. Of course, the shooting number is not exactly pretty either with the Windsor Express shooting 18% and the London Lighting at 26%. 
not exactly great. Windsor's going to want to get more of an interior presence in that second half, though. They're currently being out-rebounded 13-5. to In fact, London has just as many offensive rebounds as the Express have total, and that's not necessarily a good look. Yeah. Uh, they're going to want to fix that. Some of the early performers who we've seen, of course, uh, five points from Tyshawn Patterson. He has half the Lightning scoring already. And he's a guy that's really come on. He's a bit of their microwave, which is a guy who just sort of comes onto the court and you get him to heat up real fast. And that's what Tyshawn Patterson can do. He's already done it. He's averaging 23 and a half points per game so far. And he even had 26 in the Lightning preseason game against the Raptors 905 D-League squad. And in fact, there's a couple of guys from that squad who are gonna be here tonight. Uh, the Windsor Express, of course, featuring Shaq Keith and Jabs Newby, who both spent time on Raptors 905. Newby especially kind of interests me because he actually spent time in the league before he came here too. So a guy like Jabs Newby, who came from the NBL, developed, and then gets a shot at the D-League. That's a pretty impressive step, and it shows you just how much better the quality of NBL Canada has gone. Absolutely, 100%. 10 to 5, London with the lead here. Marty Thompson and Chris Croucher up in the booth. London at home, coming off of that home and home series with the Niagara River Lions. And we saw in that game in Niagara, a historic game at the Meridian Center, uh, London were out rebounded uh, substantially. I don't have the exact numbers on that, but uh, actually, I think it was actually 54 to 35. Um, and Chad Posmus, we talked about it before, was not featured in that game uh, prominently. Um, a bit of concern, I guess, if you're a London Lightning fan, if Chad Posmus isn't going to be featured, if, are they going to have trouble on the boards as we see a missed shot there from Theo Davis? He'll collect the ball and uh, toss it off to uh, Chris Commons. A guy like Chad Posmus, though, I think he's going to eventually catch on. He's just had a, two rough games, which is only two games in his NBL career so far. There's plenty of time to get it going. Ball's up here on the other end of the court. It's going to go out of play in Windsor with another stop. Again, 10 to 5 is the score, 5.24 on the clock. Try to keep you updated on the other game uh, happening tonight as Halifax takes on Moncton. Looks like the Hurricanes have a 50 to 46 lead. It's actually just at the end of the first half there. So again, just heading into halftime. Uh, looks like Halifax has a 50 to 46 lead. I'll keep you posted on that. Singleton with it. Seven seconds on the shot clock, five minutes on the game clock here in the first quarter. Singleton off to Commons. He'll take another three. It's contested from LaZelle, and it'll be collected here by Singleton. Fresh shot clock. Adrian Moss here. Jones up against him. He's going to take a run. It's tipped loose off of Windsor, so London will get possession. Adrian Moss, a player London Lightning fans are also familiar with, of course. He spent time with the London Lightning, won a championship, went to the Island Storm, was close to a championship and since has joined Windsor and again, another championship. So you could say Adrian Moss is a bit of a good luck charm in NBL Canada. London with possession here. This is Kevin LaSalle taking it to the hoop and that's gonna be a foul uh, against Mr. Theo Davis. LaSalle was definitely going for the slam there. He really attacked uh, Davis on that play. Davis, very rough foul. LaSalle going to take two at the line. So Kevin LaSalle at the line here. 4.36 on the clock. And Lightning with a five point lead here. A decent crowd on this Tuesday night. And the second home game of the London Lightning. Very young season. Again, they're one and one. Meantime, Windsor 0 and one after uh, going down to the Orangeville A's, and I guess we really haven't talked about that game because that was another uh, dagger uh, of the two daggers that we saw uh, at the start of this uh, MBL campaign in the opening weekend, as we saw uh, Bilal Ben uh, taking it down there for the Orangeville A's at the very end to take a win away from the defending champs, Theo Davis with two. Yeah, Orangeville a team no one really knew about going into the season, but certainly made a statement with that first win. Some rough stuff there. No call either way. Bolden with possibly takes a tumble. Bolden with possession. Oh, it's taken there so easily by Capers. Now to Possumus. And Theo Davis, a little too aggressive there on defense. Foul. Uh, I think Possumus wants a shooting foul, but are they giving it to him? It's tough. It looked like he was just 
in his still in motion. He was just moving the ball across uh, with both hands. But he did bring the ball up as if he was getting ready for that shot. So that's why, I th personally, I'd give it the shooting foul and the refs decide otherwise. Jordan Widener has come into the game and Mustafa Jones is making way. 3.53 on the clock, 10 to seven. London with possession and the lead. Ball's in. Well, that's gonna be too long. Uh, very interesting stuff as you saw Marcus Capers uh, taking over the five seconds to throw that ball in. Coach Jones with a very enthusiastic celebration <laughs> too. That's the type of thing a coach loves. Shut down defense that gives the other team trouble. Kevin LaSalle tips the ball out of play. Windsor will get set for the inbound here on the baseline. 16 seconds on the shot clock, 345 on the game clock in the first quarter. If you told me that with three minutes left, 345 left, we'd see a 10-7 game between these two, I'd call you crazy. <laughs> wow. Kirk Williams Jr. with possession. And that's no good collected there by Posthumus. Jeremy Wise. A nice pass to Jordan Widener, wide open for three. Fantastic play by the London Lightning. Jordan Widener, a Kyle Julius favorite. He's very good at getting that three-point shot off. He has such a beautiful shooting stroke, too. One of the things, uh, of course, Bill from our halftime show and I were talking about, uh, apparently told Bill he made 78 free throws in a row one time because he's that good a shooter. Ball's up, and that is good. That's going to be a charge, though. It's going to be a charge against Shaquille Keith. No basket, London ball. It's nice to see Kevin Lozell's peskiness going uh, London's way this time. As he gets set to inbound the ball here, again, that was an offensive foul against Shaquille Keith. That's his first foul of the game. Four for the Windsor Express so far this quarter, just two for the London Lightning. And it looks like uh, Jamal McQueen coming in for the Express, the Windsor native. Jeremy Wise with possession. Adrian Moss playing defense there, as you see Wise taking it up. Can't be finished there by Capers. They'll fall out of play, and Windsor get the ball once again. A two. little bit of sloppiness between these two teams. Again, the shooting numbers really not pretty. Windsor 3 of 16 in London, and not much better, 5 of 17. Uh, very, very, very far off what they usually shoot. Lou Versell coming into the game here for the Express. Lou Versell, my favorite name to spell. <laughs> I'm not even going to begin to spell it out. You can, uh, you're at a computer. You can just look up how to spell Lou Vercel's name. Adrian Moss with possession. And there's Vercel with it here. 10 seconds on the shot clock, 2.39 on the game clock. Moss finding it a bit of space. Now back to Vercel. Open. Kirk Williams Jr. misses. It's tipped there by McQueen, but collected by Wise. Wise, a very veteran rebound there. LaSalle for three. Yes! Kevin LaSell, the London Lightning's answer to the pesky three. Great job by LaSell, able to nail that shot. 214 rather on the clock, 16 to seven. Winds are down, they have the ball. This is Jamal McQueen for three and it's good. Great answer from McQueen with a pesky three of his own. And that's something that the Windsor Express are really good at. They aren't necessarily going to blow the, the doors off the barn, but they're able to just sort of keep up with the team. And then when the other team starts tiring them out, bury him. Chad Posmus with possession. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Here's Kevin LaSalle. Won't go, but he'll be fouled. He'll take a trip to the line. Kevin LaSalle clearly trying to have a statement game against his former team. Excellent job. He walked so far out, I was, I was trying to listen <laughs> if it was an offensive foul or something. He walked all the way down to the lightning end of the court. Jeez. He's got two shots coming up here. A minute 44 on the clock here in the first quarter. LaSalle misses it and takes a look at the net. Gets real close to it and walks back. He's telling him what's up. <laughs> Again, the MBLC vet. Two championships with the Express. That's got to be a lane violation, right? You see the refs pointing there. Vercel and Posthumus were just about under the basket before Lozell was even done his pre-shot routine, so. My apologies, I just looked away from the play for one second, but you see the refs having a chat. I think they're trying to figure out if uh, Vercel or Posthumus 
I don't know. They both they both committed a lane violation, but I think they're trying to see who pushed who. I'm I I don't know. I would have think you just sort of let them offset. You see LaSalle lining up there by himself. They're getting the third uh, referee involved there on the baseline. See a great shot from our cameraman there. I don't know if you can read lips. If you can, though, you know something we don't. Zuniza comes in, and uh, I guess it's going to be inbound Windsor. I think they called it a jump ball, and then the possession arrow was going Windsor's way. Solid catch there. Thank you, Chris. Hey, it's what I do. Jamal McQueen, down low to Kirk Williams Jr. This is Vercel, the big man for three. It's no good, collected here by LaSalle. London moving the ball up, 123 on the clock. It's handed off. Mr. Marcus Capers. Excellent play by Kevin LaSalle to attack Vercel and draw him away, freeing up Capers off the pass. As we see another great effort, Shaq Keith. And this is what Windsor does. They just keep answering. And then by the time the end of the game comes and you're tired, Windsor seems to still be fresh. We look back to the 87, or sorry, uh, 98 to uh, 97 win over Orangeville. That was one of the more lower scoring games of the entire weekend. I think there was only one other game that, uh, that had one team not scoring over 100 points. So as you said, just trying to keep pace right to the very end. Hopefully we get an exciting finish that they, that they got in Windsor on Saturday. Adrian Moss still with possession. 40 seconds on the shot clock. Kirk Williams Jr. down low to McQueen. He's double teamed. This is Vercel. Great block there from Kevin LaSalle. Kevin LaSalle again having a statement game against his former team. Jordan Widener for three. He was fouled. He's going to take a trip to the line. I got to say, Widener hasn't played a whole ton so far this year, but what I've seen tonight, already some of his best. In fact, he's only played nine minutes a night. But these are really good minutes he's putting in tonight. Maybe he'll get a little bit more run. 27 seconds left in the first quarter, and uh, the former first overall draft pick, Jordan Widener, goes to the line. And Widener, one of the many players coming over from the Mississauga Power with Kyle Julius. I know we talked about it a bit in the first game, but, uh, I mean, you've got Warren Ward. Um, I feel like I'm blanking on a couple. Marcus, Marcus Capers. Capers. And uh, Nick Okori as well that counts. I believe he played for Mississauga before that. But yeah, uh, Chad Posthumus too. Oh, yeah, that's correct, Chad Posthumus. So uh, lots of uh, big names coming from the former Mississauga power. Winds are getting set to make a change. So Shaquille Keith uh, making way for, uh, looks like uh, McQueen's coming back into the game. 22 seconds on the clock. Oh, my apologies, it was Jabs Newby who's coming to the game. He has possession, and that's going to be a foul against Jordan Widener. Okay. Interesting, as you saw, Jabs Newby being double teamed, and ref deemed that to be too rough. Inbound coming up here for Windsor. The referees, of course, uh, received extra training this offseason uh, due to their, uh, I don't know if it's an agreement, but uh, working with the D-League. Six seconds on the game clock, six seconds on the shot clock. This is Moss trying to get the last shot away, and McQueen won't be able to do it. Um, as we head into the quarter break, we'll stay on the, on the referees. And um, it's kind of interesting when you talk a bit about the referees because you're right, you know, there's, there's definitely improvement across, across everything. Uh, you know, there, and obviously refs are always looking to be better, but... Um, I can't remember which player was talking about it, but talking about uh, referees, or I think actually, I think it was, um, I think it was Bill talking about watching uh, European basketball uh, the last couple of months and saying that you know refereeing there is pretty much at the same level, um, and that you know unless you get to that very very elite level, that you know mistakes are, are bound to happen. It actually looks like the first quarter is not about to end. You've got one second left, um, and it's, of course with that uh, with the uh, so it's set to 1.5 seconds. LaSalle on the inbound. This is Got Jeremy Wise, and he didn't get rid of it in time. So that's no good. But, uh, okay, so now that's the first quarter. Um, but, you know, there's, there's definitely improvement, uh, improvement being made as well, and, and, the, and the league made a specific point of improving the referees or at least saying that that was something that they're definitely looking at uh, because, you know, lots of concern from players uh, and coaches in that regard. Yeah, and it's something the, the league is aware of. Uh, it's it's never going to be perfect because basketball is probably the hardest thing to referee. 
There's a lot of uh, last second judgment decisions to have to make, and you have to be dead on right or else someone's not going to like it. Uh, at the same time, there is very much room for improvement. Uh, it's it's not a perfect science, and if there was a, an exact way to cure it, I'm sure they could. But uh, it's something that, just like the players, just like the league itself, it's going to grow and get better. And we'll stay on that vein, just uh, mentioning that after our regular halftime segment with uh, Mr. Bill Ovens, we'll be uh, chatting with uh, Commissioner Dave Magley. So um, if you have any questions, actually, because we've got the YouTube stream up and we've got the comments, so feel free to drop a line if you, uh, if you want to ask uh, Commissioner Magley a question. Uh, you know, I'm not going to ask anything you put there, but, uh, you know, obviously only legitimate questions are accepted. But we will be asking about the, the, the Tony Bennett decision, uh, which, again, if you just if you missed it and you hadn't tuned in before, um, it's been decided that uh, Tony Bennett will be returning to the uh, team or returning to the lineup, rather, uh, on Friday. He was uh, one of the players suspended uh, in the uh, altercation that was, uh, that, was uh, that happened before the would-be Game 7 uh, of last year's final against Halifax. Uh, he appealed the decision and he's since been with the team. And again, uh, he's set to return to the team uh, on Friday, a further game uh, on Friday. So again, uh, if you have any questions for Commissioner Magley, feel free to drop them in there. Uh, you can also reach us uh, on Twitter at, uh, I'm at Marty Thompson underscore, Thompson with a P. And uh, Chris, you're at? Croucher Sports. Croucher Sports, there we go. I'm sorry I didn't know your Twitter account. Hey, what you, what hey, you, it's okay. It's not like we've been friends for a while now. I'm a terrible friend. You are. 21 to 12, the London Lightning with the lead here to start the second quarter. Marty Thompson, Chris Croucher in the booth. London in the white, Windsor in the away reds. And London with possession here to start this second frame. It's collected here by Patterson as Lightning get things underway. Maxwell, bounce pass. Kurt, Curtis Washington could not collect. And Windsor with another stop. Singleton. Jabs Newby now back to Singleton. Windsor looking to improve as you see uh, Theo Davis stepping out of bounds. Windsor looking to improve on the just 12 points they managed to score in that first frame. Yeah, it was a very rough uh, quarter for Windsor. Only shooting 23%. It's getting better, but uh, still not where they'd like it to be. Uh, they're gonna need to find someone who can put the ball in the basket. Warren Ward takes it. Maxwell from the corner, and it's good. <laughs> and he falls on his duff, thanks to uh, Coach Jones there. But another big shot by Maxwell. He's young. We don't know much about him. Maybe he's got some range we didn't know about, because that was a very nice-looking shot. Pardon me, Queen it was Patterson, so I'm completely wrong. <laughs> Singleton with possession. Here's Jabs Newby, the former Raptors 905 player. Oh, gorgeous pass to Theo Davis, who will be fouled. He'll take a trip to the line. A nice behind the back pass there from Jabs Newby. And Theo Davis will take a trip to the line, the Brampton native. Theo Davis, he didn't play too, too much for Coach Magley at Brampton last year, but he is a Canadian player. He's played at Gonzaga. He actually started his college career there, which is a very, very good basketball school. So he's got some talent. Clearly there's something uh, the Windsor Express saw in him that they decided to bring back. He only averaged two and a half points, two and a half rebounds, but maybe some untapped potential with Theo Davis. 10.54 on the clock here in the second quarter. London getting set on the inbounds. Maxwell getting set. Off to Warren Ward as Windsor, a uh, bit of pressure there in the, uh, the backcourt. And the Raps are going to blow things down on the baseline. Looks like there's a foul. So again, 24 to 13, London with the lead. And they're going to get possession again by the looks of it. Maxwell. And it's tipped out there by Theo Davis. That foul was against Raheem Singleton, according to the table. And the London Lightning call a timeout. So 24 to 13, the Lightning have the lead here. And just about 11 minutes to go here in the second quarter. So the Windsor Express not doing too well on the offensive side of the ball, going five for 21 so far this game. Uh, definitely not a good percentage, just 23% 
from the field. London, meantime, uh, going 36% from the field and an impressive 57% from beyond the arc. Chris, London seems like they're uh, seems like they're going to the three ball. It seems like it's working for now. Well, it's something they're going to have to do, but luckily it's been dropping. The rest of the shooting not nearly as pretty. We only have 23% shooting from the Windsor Express, 36 from the London Lightning. Again, that saving grace is four of seven from three-point land. Uh, they're also out-rebounding the Express 20 to 11 so far. London with six offensive rebounds already. That's pretty impressive. Turnovers are dead even. The steals are three to two for Windsor. Assists five to two for the London Lightning. And of course, team fouls a little rougher on Windsor's end as they have seven and the Lightning have four. Your leading scorers at this break right now, Tyshawn Patterson at eight points, Jordan Wheatner at six, and then two others on the Lightning at three. Those are Maxwell and LaSalle. Uh, for the Windsor Express, still not really having anyone consistently hit it as no one on the team has made more than one basket. Uh, the, the leading scores for the Express are Theo Davis at three, Jamal McQueen at three, and Maurice Bolden at three. We're gonna be coming back here, of course, just in three seconds. There's 10 minutes, 47 seconds left in the second. It's 24 to 13 for the London Lightning over the Windsor Express. Decent start here for the one and one London Lightning. Again, we look towards uh, a weekend of home games here at Budweiser Gardens for London. They're taking on Orangeville on Saturday, 7 p.m. And then the Windsor Express come back to take on London. Uh, that is a 2 p.m. start on Sunday. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Patterson takes the shot anyways. It's no good. Collected there by McQueen. Patterson just has no chill. He's going 100 miles an hour every time he's on the court. Wow. Singleton takes it along the baseline. Up to McQueen. Now to Chris Commons. Takes a shot again for three, and it's good. Chris Commons, another three-pointer. He does that so well. One of the best stretch fours the NBL has seen. 10-16 on the clock, Warren Ward with possession. Patterson, now to Washington. And the refs are gonna blow that down for traveling. Yeah, Washington just lost his pivot foot when he was making some moves there. Singleton with possession, up against Patterson. Ooh, Patterson gave him a bit of space, it's no good. Collected there by Washington. Singleton, a very confident shooter. He looks to pass. He's not exactly a, a shoot first guy naturally, but he can shoot. Warren Ward with possession. Chris Commons in there as you see the pass off to Maxwell. He's gonna draw the foul. That was a very polished post move by a very young player. Steven Maxwell with the spin move. Some nice feet work right there. And he's gonna go to the line too. So 26 to 16, 9.41 on the clock here in the second quarter. Step Maxwell goes to the line here for his bonus opportunity. And it's good. So London with a hefty lead in this second quarter and Windsor cough up the ball. This is Maxwell! Couldn't get it to go. Holy. Uh, <laughs> not for a lack Why of trying. As we see uh, McQueen taking it, my apologies there. It's a pretty crazy play. And uh, the ref's going to blow that down. So uh, Maxwell going for the dunk. That would have been the most devastating poster. But he also jumped from so far away. I don't think he realized how far away from the basket he was. Um, <laughs> I just hope he's okay on the landing. Wow. Maurice Bolden comes in the game and McQueen will make way. 9.22 on the clock, 27 to 16. This is Theo Davis at the line here for two, the Brampton native and former Brampton A, draining the first one. Like I said, not for lack of trying. Not for lack of trying. Two fouls each. Davis looking to cut into this lead. It's down to now just nine points. As you see Windsor applying a full court press. And you see LaSalle in the corner, somehow backs away from it. Lots of space on this right-hand side. Maxwell will take it up again. Can't get that one to go either. Except the ball will fall out off of Windsor. London will keep possession. Maxwell again leaping from very far away. That time he was more interested in drawing contact, I would think. Uh, unable to as it uh, drops out of bounds. So it looks like Marcus Capers is coming into the game and Maxwell making way. 
And you see Kyle Julius just having a quick chat there before Maxwell makes his way to his seat. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Warren Ward collects it. Maurice Bolden playing defense. Ward works around a slight Kevin LaSalle screen. Still keeps possession. Five seconds on the shot clock. He's got to get it off, and he will at the very top of the key. He misses, and Maurice Bolden can't collect the rebound, but Windsor will keep possession. Ward again tried very hard, but they burned a little bit too much shot clock before they could get that off, so we just kind of had to fire it. 8.55 on the clock here in the first half and second quarter. Reem Singleton. LaSalle playing defense. This is Maurice Bolden. Bounce pass into Chris Commons. Up against Curtis Washington. Can't find the space, and it's collected here by London. Patterson moves it up the court. Warren Ward to his right. He's going to take it all the way to the hoop. It's good. Good stuff there from Tyshawn Patterson. Jabs Newby trying to get it started here for Windsor. They're down 29 to 18. Chris Commons for three again. Why not? Can't get it to go. Collected there by Ward. LaSalle takes the long pass. And that's going to fall out off of Windsor. So London will keep possession 19 seconds on the shot clock. A little bit too much bounce on that bounce pass from LaSalle. And then Patterson just ran right into the side of it. It looked like Chris Commons. This is a very big moment for the Lightning. Can they take charge right here? Can they take control right now? It's been a very low scoring game, but they've been the team most efficient at putting up points. Again, courtesy of that 50% three point shooting they have as they take another one here. That's Warren Ward from the far side. It's no good. Windsor making three changes. You see Adrian Moss with possession. And also Shane Ross coming into the game. Shaquille Keith, who's coming along the baseline, he's also coming to the game. But Ross will finish that for two. Make it 29 to 20, 7.56 left. Shane Ross, a guy that you really like to have on the interior of your team. He's just able to bang and crash and get those dirty buckets. A nice pass, but they're going to call an offensive foul there. Speaking of Shane Ross, it looked like he drew a charge on that one. 7.48 on the clock as you see Ross pretty pumped up as he runs to the other end of the court, awaiting the ball. Let the be take up here by Adrian Moss. Again, 7.48 left in this second quarter. We'll have what's cooking with Bill Ovens at halftime. We'll also be chatting with Commissioner Magley. So again, feel free to uh, toss any questions you have in the uh, YouTube chat. Shane Ross on the fade, it's no good. Kevin LaSalle collects. He's got Warren Ward to his left. He's going to take it all the way up, give it to Possumus. He's fouled. He'll take a trip to the line. Possumus, another guy on the Lightning. He's new. He had huge, huge numbers in his brief stint with the Mississauga Power last year. He's 6'11", 270, so there's very few guys that can actually match him for size. But not only that, he's a little quicker than a guy that size would be expected to be. So he's able to make a couple of nice cuts to the basket, as we saw there. He just beat his defender. Chad Possumus, usually a guy London would look to for a bunch of rebounds. He's got three rebounds to his name so far. But London, for the most part, still winning that rebounding battle. 25 to 16. Seven offensive boards for London, three for the Windsor Express. Shaq Keith off to Maurice Bolden. 7.14 on the clock, 10 seconds on the shot clock. It's good from Adrian Moss. Adrian Moss, one of the most gifted shooters in the league. He's a crazy good shooter too. He had 38 against the Raptors D-League team in Windsor's preseason game against them. A very gifted scorer when he gets going. Possumus tries to spin away, but they're gonna blow that one down. Looks like it's gonna go against Shane Ross. So 6.57 on the clock. As we see Jeremy Wise coming in. And looks like uh, Warren Ward will be making way. Lightning should be a little nervous. They're letting the Express slowly claw themselves back into this game. Again, 23 to, or 30 to 23, rather. London with the lead, they have the ball. Possumus off to Jeremy Wise. He takes it up, slam! Marcus Capers. Great pass from Wise and Capers. Able to jump out of the gym and he does it right there. Huge play for the London Lightning. Maybe that can be the start of them pulling away. Bolden. Off to Shaquille Keith. Bounce pass is collected here by Mr. Patterson. He'll take it. He'll be fouled there by Maurice Bolden, who actually grabs him on the way down to keep him from falling into the stands. And I'm sure the fan really appreciates that. <laughs> 6.26 on the clock. Definitely a foul there from the referee. But good sport from Maurice Bolden 
to keep him from falling in. Five fouls for the Windsor Express, three for the London Lightning. Tyshawn Patterson at the line here for two. And that's good for the London Lightning again. They're in their home whites, Windsor in the away reds. Marty Thompson, Chris Croucher up in the booth. Second shot's good. Mo Bolden off to Adrian Moss. Maurice Bolden with it, Jeremy Wise playing defense. A little bit of space, Shane Ross on the spin, takes it. They're gonna call an offense, or defensive foul rather against Shane Ross. Nope, they're gonna call that uh, offensive. Oh, offensive, my well, apologies. Six oh nine on the clock, thirty four to twenty three. Shane Wise on the inbound. LaSalle takes it. Adrian Moss and his former teammates face. See LaSalle just spinning away. A little bit of space. He's gonna take it off to Possumus. There's another foul, and that's gonna go a London's way. Back to back offensive foul. It's probably a good thing that wouldn't have counted because Chad Possumus had a bit of an embarrassing miss dunk right after that. So exactly six minutes to go here in this first half and second quarter. Shane Ross heading out and Purcell coming in for the Windsor Express. Purcell, interesting. We don't know much about him. He was a late add, too. At 6'11", though, one of the big bodies that the Windsor Express need, and we've seen him step out at the three-point line, too. He's got possession here. He's up against Chad Posthumus. Can't get it to go. Capers collects 540 on the clock. Shaq Keith up against Capers here at the very top. This is Patterson. Steps into the key and it's collected here on the far side by Wise. Six seconds on the shot clock, 525 on the game clock. Pat, this is Posthumus. He's going to have to take it. He will. That's good for two. Posthumus has been showing his range. He hasn't been dominating down low like we're used to. However, he has been taking that mid-range shot and shooting it well. Adrian Moss with an answer back. Speaking of shooting well, Adrian Moss, another three. You do not want him to get hot if you're the London Lightning. Adrian Moss so far two for three, but uh, we talked a bit about it before the game. Uh, Adrian Moss um, in that game uh, against Orangeville went six for 16. So you see uh, that long shot from Patterson, no good. And we talked a bit about it again uh, off, uh, off camera, talking a bit about uh, how a player can win you a game, but they can also lose you a game if, if he elects to shoot that much and, and unfortunately miss. Well, again, you get those guys who, I call them the microwaves, they can shoot a whole bunch of shots, and hopefully they go in, as we see a very tough shot there, but that doesn't work. We see a guy like Moss, we've seen him shoot his team into games like they did against the D-League. However, it is possible that sometimes that guy shoots you out of the game. So it's sort of a risk-reward with a guy like that. Bolden, contested by two London Lightning players, can't get it to go, the refs blow things down. So 4.13 on the clock. 36 to 25. And that's going to be a foul against Jeremy Wise. My apologies. London with possession here. London's Ball. done a good job of holding this 10 point lead. Wise with possession. Maxwell. Wise takes it back. Four minutes to go. Jordan Widener in the game. Distance two is no good. It's collected there by Bolden. Into the corner. Adrian Moss all the time in the world. It's good for three. No, it's not. My apologies. He just had it lined up there. Lots of time to line it up, but it's no good. Again, Adrian Moss, not a guy you want to leave open at the three-point line. He is capable of completely shooting Windsor back into this game. Not that they're totally out. They're only down 11 right now. Uh, we've seen a bunch of lead swings in NBL history, and uh, we've seen enough to know that no lead's really safe at halftime. Bolden on the inbound. Vercel, Netta Commons at the very top. 16 seconds on the shot clock, 3.40 on the game clock. Vercel can't collect. London ball. 
36 to 25, Jeremy Wise with it. Wise looks to Jordan Widener. Posmus in front. Now to Maxwell, back to Wise. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Warren Ward keeps the ball from going back over the line. Four seconds on the shot clock. Ward, desperation, and it's good. Good shot by Warren Ward. He just needed to get back into shooting the ball. Again, he missed last game, but the game before, 31 points. He just needs to get that rhythm back. Three minutes. Commons to Maurice Bolden. Takes it up at the top of the key. It's no good. And it's collected here by London once again. Jeremy Wise. Corrals the ball across. He takes it back and tries to set up his offense. Jordan Widener in motion. Bit of space here. He'll give it off to Possumus. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Warren Ward with it. Back to Possumus at the very top. He's up against Vercel. That's a prayer. It's no good. Massive rebound by Maxwell and a big putback. Stephen Maxwell again, super athletic. Looks like he was born and raised in a gym. Able to get a very tough play going there at 22 years old. I know I'm saying it a lot, but he's the one of the youngest players in the league. And the amount of natural talent that he has is just incredible. Look forward to seeing him develop in the NBLC. 2.30 on the clock. Bit of a break there as Maxwell does up his shoe. And the Express call a timeout. That's Tony Jones on the far side. 40 to 25, the London Lightning off to a great start here at Budweiser Gardens against their 401 rivals. Chris, what do you see from the stats so far? Well, just taking a look at some of the numbers here, the shooting really has not improved much for Windsor Express. Nine of 35 from the field. That's simply not gonna cut it. I do like this timeout though by Coach Jones. Uh, at 40 to 25, the Lightning were starting to pull away and really take control of this game. That's something you do not want if you're the Windsor Express. Uh, one of the things that Windsor's gonna have, pardon me, that they've been doing better is they've actually started to out-rebound the Lightning just a bit. It's still 29-21 for the Lightning. However, Windsor's starting to actually capitalize on those rebounds as well. Uh, some of the more interesting stats are points in the paint. Right now, London dominating down low, 14 points compared to Windsor's four, and more second chance points with seven off the two. Now we mentioned the fact that the turnover battle is about the same, 10 for Windsor, nine for London. However, one team isn't converting on that, and that is the Windsor Express. London has 10 points off of their nine turnovers. The Express have 10 turnovers, but zero points from it. Two and a half left in the second quarter. Marty Thompson and Chris Croucher up in the booth. Again, let's cook with Bill Evans coming up. Also a discussion with Commissioner Magley, then we'll be back for the second half here at Budweiser Gardens. It's been some fantastic games between these two clubs over the years. It's definitely been one of my favorite games to call in terms of just a matchup in general. And with this extended schedule now up to 40 games, I believe we get nine uh, different games, uh, both in Windsor and London, including the preseason, which would bring it up to 10. And I'm sure there will be no chippiness between these two teams. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's probably gonna be chippiness. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna speak for I'm gonna speak for Chris here. One of the more uh, bitter rivalries here in the NBL, and you would think that it wouldn't really uh, consistently remain, with the fact that uh, roster turnover is so high in this league. But you know, there's enough returning players that they know what they think of each other. Returning players and players that switch teams uh, uh, in, in between London and Windsor, because obviously you've got Singleton, Bolden, uh, Bennett, all in Windsor, and then you've got LaSalle uh, up in London as well. Yeah, there's a couple of guys who have been on both sides of this rivalry. And, you know, there's even a little added heat for those guys because the team that they left cut them in the case of Adrian Moss and Raheem Singleton and Maurice Bolden, really. So there's a little bit of added, uh, uh, I guess I'm trying to think of a nicer word than what I want to say, but there's a little <laughs> bit of animosity between the two sides. I think that's a good word for that. Chris Common, second shot is good. Make it 41 to 27. London with the lead. Widener with a smart play. Bounces the ball uh, out off of the Windsor Express. London to keep possession. But the pressure still to be applied by the visiting team. See Kyle Julius right at the corner there instructing his team. 
Your thoughts on Windsor tossing out the uh, full court press every once in a while? It kind of keeps uh, London on guard, that's for sure. You see Posmus, that's going to be a foul. Also sends them flying, apparently, but they've been doing this full court trap because they know to get into this game, they're going to have to get a couple more shots than London's able to, and one of the ways to get that is from forcing turnovers. So that's what Windsor's really looking to do with that full court trap. 2.17 on the clock. Unfortunately for the Windsor Express, they're over the limit, so Chad Posmus will walk down the court, and he's now set to take two shots from the charity strike. Again, two and a quarter left. London. I'm going to go out on a limb and uh, say that horn that we hear every time a London player shoots a free throw is from some visiting Windsor fans. <laughs> There's quite a bit in the, in the stands. They've got... Uh, a section there, uh, 107, I believe, that they're, they're usually in that back corner, but I actually saw someone on the near side as well. They're, they're sprinkled in amongst the regular fans here. It's great to see them willing to make the trip, too. Commons with a fantastic play, draining it from the far side. I should note that's a super fan uh, on the other side of the court blowing the horn there. Yes, there you go. There's uh, yeah, there's a, a number, of, uh, number of notable MBLC fans here. We should just keep it that way. Warren Ward for two misses that. Heavily contested. Minute 40 on the clock. Moss, bounce pass. This is Chris Commons for three. Why not? No good that time. It's collected here by Mr. Warren Ward. He's got Jeremy Wise to his right. He's going to take it to his left. And Maxwell, it's no good. It's collected by the Express. Maxwell just sort of had to pull up on his shot there. Uh, I didn't see the Windsor player who did it, but someone went there for the charge and Maxwell with a full Full head of steam, had to just sort of pull up and make sure he didn't make contact. Singleton, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Chris Commons. Again, the Express with just 29 points to their name so far this game. They've got a minute left uh, in this second quarter. That's good from Vercel. Vercel with the sort of buzzer beater, just beating that shot clock. Excellent effort from the big man. Jeremy Wise takes it. 50 seconds left in this quarter. Wise finds Maxwell, lots of space in the top of the key. He's going to give it to Jordan Widener. Another bounce pass. Maxwell takes it back, drains it. Incredibly athletic play for Maxwell. He was going up with the right hand, saw the defender coming, who was able to go around to the left hand and under. Beautiful play. Singleton to Chris Commons. Here's Jamal McQueen with it. 22 seconds on the game clock now, just eight seconds on the shot clock. That is now expired. London have possession in the quarter. Jordan Widener for three, misses, Posmus finishes. Great rebound from Chad Posmus to follow that one up. Eight seconds left in the half. Singleton with it. And the Express with just 31 points. That looks like that might be it as we see the clock expire. Wise will toss that up, but it's no basket as he was unable to beat the buzzer. So, 46 to 31. Bill yeah, it was Ovitz. a good, good quarter of basketball, wasn't it? <laughs> too, too bad it took him a half to get it together. I could, uh, yeah. This is this is Bill. This is Bill. This Sorry. is Bill. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, 31 points for the Windsor Express. Uh, yeah, they're uh, they're having a lot of trouble handling the ball. Uh, they're not, you know, they're having trouble getting shots off. Uh, it's, it's, man, I'm like, the second, if I'm the coach of the Windsor, I'm thinking right now, okay, we're going to get the get it deep to 23 and then dish out the commons. Commons seems to be the only one that's doing lots. Or they're going to have to go with like three or four big guys all at once and, and try to get control of the backboards. But Chad's been doing a good job on the backboards. Curtis has been doing a good job on the backboards. So I Windsor's in tough. And London hasn't played real great, truthfully. Yeah. It's been pretty sloppy basketball. 100%. Now, I know you wanted to do this. This is our second broadcast of the year, but Basketball 101, you're a former player, former referee. Um, for those that aren't familiar with the rules of the game, and, and there are quite a number um, and a lot of people that are learning as part of this league, um, give us the lowdown. Okay, so this is for you people that, that maybe you watch basketball a couple of times, but you really don't don't understand the intricacies of it. We're not going to teach you this in, in 15 seconds, but over the year, keep tuning in and we're going to get different things going. Okay, the court's 94 feet long, it's 50 feet wide. The basketball hoops are 10 feet in the air. 
if you're not familiar with basketball, but you are familiar with hockey, think of in between the blue lines at center ice and then move the boards back about one row of seats. That's the, the amount of space we're dealing with. Each side has five players on the floor at a time. And the object is to put the ball through the basket from the top to the bottom. Now it's pretty obvious that the closer you get to the basket, the easier it is going to be to put the ball in the basket. So the offensive team tries to get as close to the basket as they can for an easy shot, and the defense tries to stop them, and that's basketball 101. Everything else we talk about will fit into that context somehow. 100%. Now that, now that we've got that out of the way, if you were Kyle Julius, what kind of adjustments would you make to this team right now? Not lots. I, I, he's got such a short bench. We haven't seen Garrett Williamson. Uh, Ward is obviously not moving full speed. Glad to see Jordan Wiedner moving well. Glad to see Mustafa Jones moving well. They're going to almost have to go with uh, a short lineup with a big guy. You know, yeah. they're not going to be able to, to look at Windsor's lineup and say, okay, they got they got a guy 6'7", 6'9", and 6'10", so we're going to match that up. They've got to match playing styles. And without Garrett Williamson, they got to keep it wide and, and, and keep it fast. I don't think Windsor is, has the foot speed of, of London. Uh, Marcus Capers, you know, I was talking to him before the game, and I said, Marcus, come on, have a breakout game. And he, and he duffed a couple of dunks and something else, but he's starting to pick it up later on. Yeah. Uh, and then again, if I'm the Windsor coach, it's, listen, we got to slow this thing down. We cannot play racehorse basketball against these guys. You've got to take smart shots. you got to block out and get the rebounds. Whoever... If Windsor doesn't take a stranglehold on the backboards in the second half, you know, it's just going to play itself out. Provided London doesn't do something dumb like they did in Niagara. I didn't see the game, but I saw the fourth quarter stats. Niagara scored 34 points in the fourth quarter. Now, the fourth quarter has 12 minutes. If you figure three possessions per minute, that's 36 possessions. I get 18. They get 18. If they score 34 points on 18 possessions, they are really awesome, and the other team played dumb. 100%. We're gonna we're gonna wrap you up pretty quick, but I know you got one more point to make here. Uh, the, there's good scoring. Uh, I like Maxwell. If I'm the coach of Maxwell, don't put the ball. Shoot the ball. He gets in there and he tries to like push it up like a shot put. When he puts a little wrist roll on it, off the backboard every time awesome thank you very much bill i appreciate it sorry we had to cut you short there but uh we've got uh we've got a pretty big interview here the commissioner david magley how are you oh you gotta sorry you gotta bring that down there sorry come down like this yeah yeah there we go now i got the janet jackson thing going on <laughs> i've never heard it described that way you just made me feel pretty special there you go. um so first question uh the tony bennett um, decision that that came down obviously more Stella Costa with that news uh, talk a bit about the appeal process and uh, and the decision you came to well <clears throat> we have to look at everything as, as a separate individual incident Tony was involved in a, in a skirmish that included 15 people on one side versus four on the other uh, he, he used a chair how he used the chairs up for debate so the the, the, the consequences of that is that if it's a separate isolated incident, you know, you'd probably give a kid a couple game suspension and a $500 fine, 250. Typically when you get fines from our league, you, you don't get paid your salary as well as, as you get fined 250 for every game you miss. So that's, that, that's kind of how that number was rolled into. And, you know, you look at that versus what the Halifax guys got, which was $5,000 fines. Um, it had to do with the fact that they walked out on game seven. And yeah. so, you know, when you look at it, it was uh, the fairest way to go about it. Um, he's accepted his, he, he, he wrote an appeal, acknowledging his involvement, asking for forgiveness, and being very apologetic towards the impact he's had on his community, the, the, the coaches, the other team, everything. He really, it was a really well-written appeal letter, and I'm very happy with it. And, you know, this is how we continue to put this stuff behind us. Absolutely. So this, so this Bennett decision, I guess for transparency's sake, just talk a bit about how this was made. Was this made like last week, or, or when exactly did this all kind of happen? Yeah, this was all done last. It was all done before the season started. Okay, just before the season. Um, we okay. were, um, I, quite frankly, I thought I'd put a, a press release out, but evidently it didn't go out. <laughs> um, but it was done um, not in a yeah. vacuum. It was done with the 
I didn't make the initial decision on any of it because I wasn't commissioner at the time. Okay. So the appeal, I created the appeal process. It came to me. I made the suggestions, and the, and the owners unanimously voted on it. I mean, our, our ownership group is working together really, really well. Um, yeah. You don't see any of the of the self-serving, you know, d d d issues that happened before, where people yeah. thought more about what's best for my team than the league. The league is above every team right now. In their minds, we're doing what's right by the league in every single circumstance. I had no no pushback from Dardis, and I had no other owners that were saying what was done was wrong. It was right. the right way to handle it. And so it works really well because we've got a group of ownership that really gets it right now. And I'm really pleased with the way they're working together. Of course, that's Dardis Willis, the, uh, the owner of the uh, Windsor Express. Yes. Um, let's talk about Niagara. A very successful first night. Um, <laughs> We were talking about this before the game. Uh, what a first game to have if you have fans coming and that finish and that, like, well, watching those videos was crazy. It was, you know, one of the things I did as commissioner was I scripted all these first few games. <laughs> well, yeah, you had the buzzer beater in winter. We were talking about it. Like, that's just so yeah, weird. Isn't right? that irony that I was at both of them? I'm like that, that, that Buffalo Wild Wings commercial where I just kind of press the button and they make the right calls. and. <laughs> It's, a, it's great. Is, it's, it's great having this kind of power. Yeah, the MBLC is not turning into WWE. No, it's no, not no, being no, scripted, no. of course. I'm but not Vince McMahon. <laughs> let's talk a bit about Niagara and and what they've done. We've had a couple people ask specifically about that. Um, in your eyes, what did the Niagara River Lions need to do moving forward? I know that they've borrowed, not borrowed necessarily, but learned a lot from the London Lightning organization. Uh, what do you see for them moving forward? Well, you know, everybody's learned a lot from the London Lightning organization. You know, you, Vito's been very generous with his time, and especially as the president, he's he's very vested in everybody succeeding. And this is the most successful franchise, so we all have to learn from them. Um, what makes them unique is the fact that they have three local owners that really care about their community, have great relationships. They, they have sold more season tickets just courtside than the Oshawa Power slash Moncton, uh, Mississauga Power has had in four years. Right. Um, Moving that floor into the end zone shrunk the court down, and it made the, the bowl, the end zone bowl seats, very usable. Yeah. So when you put a 5,500-seat 5, arena down to 3,500, and then you put 2,800 people in it, that feels awfully nice. Now, add in a great game, and it was, it was spectacular. It worked well. Um, we did get one question across. Uh, I guess I missed the name on there, but one thing we've seen with Niagara is how, how they've worked with Brock. Uh, the university, obviously, with uh, with Mr. Murray coaching. Um, how do you see this? Is a question from 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 the viewer. Uh, how do you see the league working with with the CIS and and with with universities in the OUA as well here in Ontario? Um, how do you see that working out? Is there any plans to I guess work on that in terms of development players? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think that um, our primary concern is to develop basketball in Canada, and so how we can work with the OUA and and and, and work with work with the CIS and and get to know those folks and work with Canada basketball in, in a way that benefits the global good of, of promoting the sport, promoting more guys, developing more guys into our into our level. We absolutely want to get to six Canadians on every team as quickly as possible. But keep in mind, last year, 42 Canadians played in our league. That's over five a team. So we're not that far away right now from being half the teams being Canadian. What we don't want to do is lower a standard to meet a quota. Yeah. If anything, we'd rather have increase uh, a salary cap and go after the Canadians that aren't staying home, that are going abroad and playing, and bring in the better players. So, if anything, we're increasing the, the level of play for our, for our our fans and our supporters. Well, the, the six and six, uh, people have been throwing that around, and that would be six Canadians, six Americans on the roster, or six, or sorry, I should say six uh, people from, from anywhere other than Canada. Um, is that's, that's the goal moving forward, and then is that kind of something that you th think be, would be sustainable moving forward? Well, I, I, think, I, think it's a, um, I think it's inevitable. The question is timing. Right. Um, if you do it too soon and you, and, you, and you lower the quality of the product, I think we hurt our fans better than more than if we if we push it. So we're waiting to see whether that's this year or next. But I don't think we're far off. I think in the next year or two, you'll see increased Canadian content because we just have to. There's a lot of teams that have more than four Canadians right now. Yeah. And you know, when I was with with the A's, we we carried five to six Canadians all the time, and they played. They played a lot. And you look at these guys out here with Warren Ward and Chad Posthumus, Kevin Lozell. 
Now you've got you've got some Canadians that are really getting some significant minutes with this with this London Lightning team, and it's fun to watch. It, it really is. Hundred um, percent. The five second rule uh, that you guys uh, implemented in the off season. Talk a bit about the reasoning behind that. Well, it's 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 North American basketball. That's what it is. NBA, NCAA. At the end of the day, it's only FIBA where you could grab the basketball 24 seconds below the three-point line and back somebody down the entire shot clock. It makes for a much more physical game and a less, less, um, less, uh, less quick game. Yeah. In, in a game where people, we play 48 minutes because we think our fans want to see a lot of points scored. But if you slow it down by walking it in, and, and again, you know, when you look at the, the malice in the palace that took place, a lot of rules changes has happened. The, the bad boys of Detroit Pistons couldn't win today because they wouldn't be allowed to knock people off their, off their rockers when they drive. We can't afford that in our league anymore. Our league needs to be a fast-paced, fun league that doesn't have confusion in it. And the, the, that was one rule that we thought was, was the right thing to help our, 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 our league play a little bit faster. Absolutely. Got the Orange Belays coming to town uh, on Saturday. Do you miss coaching at all? Yeah, I, I, miss, <laughs> I miss the relationships with the young men. Um, you know, I have a very specific philosophy that was unique to us and that I don't believe in, in calling young men out of their, their names or cursing them or raising my voice even that often. And, and my offense was very wide open and my substitution patterns were, 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 were quite fluid. And I didn't prove that that would work at the highest level. We didn't get a championship. So there's a part of me that wishes I could have proven that concept works because as a father of, of, of all Division One athletes and college athletes, I never like my young my, my children being spoken to in a manner that that no one else is allowed to talk to. If a college professor uh, cursed at the kids the way these college coaches are allowed to, they'd be fired so quick it'd be crazy. But only in athletics we allow boorish behavior. So from my perspective, there was something I was trying to prove that I didn't find it. I mean, we we were good teams, but we didn't get it done. So yeah. I, I feel a little hole in myself that I didn't get that done. I'll let I'll let you put the uh, coach's shoes on. If you're the Windsor Express, what do you need to do on the second half? <clears throat> I got to get easier shots. You know, one of the things that's happening is these guys are really struggling to get good looks. Um, they got to they, they got to speed the game up a little bit. Uh, I know that the gentleman before me said they got to slow it down, but I think <laughs> you know when you're struggling in your half court sets, your your best option is to d them up and, and and get the ball going up and down. Now, 15 points is not in this league a secured lead, but it's a very secure lead if, if, if they're able to keep it as a half-court game and they slow it down like that because you can't – Winter's not ex executing good enough right now. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Magley, until next time, thank, thank you, you so very much, much for so the appreciate time. It. Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. 46-31, to 31, the London Lightning with the lead here. Or she just heard Commissioner Magley uh, having a chat here up in the booth. And we're about 30 seconds away uh, from getting this, uh, getting this third quarter underway between Windsor and London. Marty Thompson, Chris Croucher up in the booth. That was a pretty good chat. Pretty good chat. Got to cover lots of things as we see. Uh, thank you guys for everyone for sending in questions there. Really appreciate that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everyone was satisfied, uh, satisfied with the answers, or at least with me asking the questions. 46 to 31, London with the lead. Uh, the Express struggling to score points, and Mr. Megley just brought it up there uh, near the end of the interview that Windsor's really struggling to get good shots. Yeah, a lot of their shots have been contested, and I think the Lightning are doing a good job defensively. Uh, again, their shooting percentage is only 28% right now. So 46 to 31, as we mentioned. Express just at that 30, or at that 28%, rather, 23% uh, from the three point land. So, again, not a, good, uh, not a good percentage if you're the defending champ, Windsor Express. Third quarter about to get underway here. London and White, Windsor and Red. Decent crowd here at Budweiser Gardens. Chris Commons getting set on the inbound. Looks like for the most part the starting lineup uh, is out there for the Windsor Express, except you've got Jamal McQueen. Uh, you've got Kirk Williams Jr. You've got Adrian Moss uh, along with Reem Singleton and Chris Commons. Here is Adrian Moss with it. Start this third quarter. Nice pass off to Kirk Williams Jr. who takes Curtis Washington on, and he'll take a trip to the line. Curtis Washington, he's struggled a bit defensively since joining the London Lightning. However, he has the wingspan and the ability and the athletic skill to become a plus defender. So I think that's something that Kyle Julius is really going to work on 
uh, during Curtis Washington's tenure here with the London Lightning. Kirk Williams Jr. misses that first attempt. Former Mississauga power player. And that second shot is good. So another full court press, and that forced London to make a pretty risky pass. It'll fall out off of Windsor. London lucky to keep possession. 23 seconds on the shot clock. I like that Windsor's sticking with the trap, though. They've been forcing a bunch of turnovers, especially in that second quarter, uh, really giving London fits with that. And again, they don't really have a lot of natural pass-first guys on the London Lightning, uh, other than Jeremy Wise. None of these guys are really known for their assists or their ball movements. So uh, that's something that... If I'm the Windsor Express, I, I can't wait to put a full court press on. 46 to 32, Maxwell on the inbound. Curtis Washington, Warren Ward with it again. Garrett Williamson out uh, of this game, should mention it quickly, uh, ankle and hamstring injury. So London without him, also without the services of Nick Corey. That ball is tipped out, and it's collected here by Chris Commons of the Windsor Express. He takes the ball back, takes it up, can't get it to go. It's collected by McQueen. Fresh shot clock here for the defending champ. McQueen, ball into Commons underneath on Washington, takes it up. It's good. Washington a little low match there. Chris Commons, one of the better forwards in NBL Canada, and he has been for a while. Again, Washington, a young developing player. Uh, just a little outsmarted by the veteran there. A quick timeout called 46 to 34. Again, London with the lead. Not what you'd expect from the Windsor Express. I mean, they obviously didn't perform uh, too well on the offensive side of the ball against Orangeville, only scoring uh, 97 points. But uh, I don't think anyone really expected uh, their point total to be this low uh, through the third quarter. I think 46 to 34 has to be the lowest scoring. Uh, half and a bit that I've seen in a, in a very long time. The Windsor Express like to slow it down. I think they're going a little too slow right now. The full court press is working. I'd like them to put a little bit of that energy into the offensive end. Looking at some of the numbers we got here while we have a bit of a break, of course, Windsor shooting 30%, London 37%, so it's not exactly a stellar night. They've also lost their three ball, only 33% for the Lightning now. Of course, that was a little bit expected. You weren't really expecting them to go 50% for the rest of the game. Uh, some of the other numbers looking at rebounds, 31 to 26 for London. London with nine offensive rebounds to six for Windsor. Uh, assists, nine to five for London. Steals, six to three for London. Turnovers, 12 for Windsor, nine for the Lightning. However, the number that still stands out, uh, off of those nine turnovers, London's generated 12 points off of Windsor, pardon me, off of the 12 turnovers, London's generated 12 points. Off of Windsor's nine turnovers that they forced, they haven't gotten a single point from it yet. So if you're going to get those extra possessions, you better put it in the basket. 11 minutes to go in the third. And we're just back underway here at Budweiser Gardens. Posmus takes it off Patterson with it. Adrian Moss getting set to play defense here at the very top of the arc. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Warren Ward got a Maxwell. A little bit of space to the left side. He looks to the right. Five seconds on the shot clock now. Warren Ward with it back. He's got to look up. One second. He takes it off in time and it'll not drop. It's collected here by Maxwell. He'll be fouled. And that will be London ball jump ball. My apologies. Then London ball. Well, I think it was definitely London ball, but I, I don't know exactly where that becomes a jump ball. Uh, either way, London ball at least. Uh, just a roundabout way of getting there. So Marcus Caper is getting set on the inbound. Warren Ward, gorgeous play. Wow, with two defenders on him too. Warren Ward, even asking for the foul. He's actually not that old. He's only about 25, 26. He's about to enter his prime too. So definitely someone to look forward to as the NBL continues. Maxwell! Unbelievable! Dunk of the year? Dunk of the year. <laughs> Dunk of the year. The year so far. No, no, I'm going to call it now. I don't oh, think we're topping that one. 2015. Wow. Unbelievable stuff. Wow. 
50 to 34. What a way to get to the half century if you're the London Lightning. Adrian Moss with possession. And the refs are going to blow things down. Looks like it was too rough between Commons and Capers. Going back to that Maxwell dunk, though. He's been trying to do that all game. He just about demolished the rim that time <laughs> and took the defender with him. 9.54 on the clock as the refs communicate with the table. Look to exactly what that was. A double foul uh, between Commons and Capers. A massive slam from Mr. Stephen Maxwell. Over Chris Commons, too. <laughs> wow. What a way to introduce yourself. Ball's in here from Windsor. It's chipped over the top. Kirk Williams Jr. just two seconds on the shot clock. McQueen will get it off in time. It's no good collected here by the man of the minute, Mr. Stephen Maxwell. He gets the ball back from Capers. A little bit of space on the far side. Patterson looking to improve on his 13 points. Or my apologies, his 12 points of the game. Taken here by Singleton. He pushes his teammates ahead. One of those teammates is Adrian Moss. He goes to the hoop. It's blocked by Capers and collected here by McQueen. He steps in for two. That's no good either. Winds are having a lot of trouble converting here in the third quarter. 9-18 on the clock. That's Mr. Warren Ward from the corner. Warren Ward really starting to heat up. Again, he missed a game because of an injury. Uh, we believe it was because of his Achilles that he hurt last year acting up a bit. As we see Commons go for three, nail it. Unbelievable uh, stuff from Chris Nice Thomas. answer again. The Windsor Express just won't go away, and London's going to – they've got a nice lead here, but I just never feel safe against the Express. Chris Common, two for seven from beyond the arc tonight, uh, leading his team by far uh, in that category with uh, only three other players having three attempts. Kevin LaSalle and Jordan Widener preparing to come on here for the Windsor Express. And it looks like Shaq Keith is in the game, replacing uh, Jamal McQueen. So Stefan Maxwell at the line here for two. 54 to 37. Second shot's good. So 8.51 on the clock, and Kevin LaSalle will officially come into the game to replace Stephen Maxwell. I think it's a bit of an applause there. Adrian Moss with possession. And that's Warren Ward tipping the ball loose, but it's going to be a foul. It looks like it's going to go against Ward. So make that three fouls for the London Lightning, two for the Windsor Express. Again, 8.42 on the clock here in the third frame. Balls up from distance from Shaq Keith. It's no good. Collected here by Patterson. He's got Warren Ward to his left. He's going to take it all the way down. Possumus, it tips loose. And now here comes Kirk William Jr. for the Windsor Express. Moss from the corner for three. It's no good. And the refs are going to blow that down. Looks like it's going to be a foul against Jordan Widener. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, it's going to be loose foul. Pardon me, loose ball foul on Jordan White. I don't know who Bowell is. He must be a new player. <laughs> 55 to 37, 819 on the clock. So we were joking about uh, uh, myself saying uh, the Niagara Ice Dogs and then saying River Dogs and kind of messing that up. So. We had the ice lines and the and the oh, river dogs yes. multiple times during Either this one. last broadcast. Either one. We got the gist of it. Eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. Jeremy Wise with possession. Looks to Posmus down low. Instead, they're going to chip it off to Warren Ward here. Five seconds on the shot clock. It's popped loose, and now here comes Raheem Singleton with a bit of space. Heavily contested. No rough stuff. Singleton will go to the line, though. Definitely a foul. We're starting to see the fouls get just a little bit harder as the game has continued. Maybe we're seeing the the fire from past rivalry games coming back here. So 7.45 on the clock. And Raheem Singleton at the line here. Two attempts coming up. Quick update from the Halifax uh, Moncton game. Last check, five minutes to go. 
Halifax up 92 to 88. That's the uh, last update we have. And late in the game there between Halifax and Moncton. Kevin LaSalle gets possession. Off to Warren Ward. Possumus up against Commons. It's been an interesting matchup all game, and this time Commons wins. Ball is loose there as Warren Ward tries to take it, but uh, that'll be out of bounds. Express get possession. Just about as much effort as he could ask for from Warren Ward, though. Had his momentum carry him right off the court. 7.28 on the clock. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Commons. Oh, down low. Easy stuff, Shaquille Keith. <laughs> Way too easy. They pulled all of the, the Lightning's interior players, LaSalle and uh, Posthumus. They pulled them all away, and that just opened up something for Shaq Keith, and no one was able to cover. Kevin LaSalle for three. It's no good. It's collected there by Adrian Moss on the run. Commons into the corner. This is Raheem Singleton for three. And the Express are red hot, 55 to 44. Definitely a good time to call a timeout if you're Kyle Julius. Yeah, the Express not a team you want to let get back into this game. You got to slow it down. Uh, it's about time for the Express to start getting some shots to drain for them. They've been having a really rough night, shooting only 29% on the night. They're making that one extra pass that leads to the buckets, though, and that's been excellent for the Windsor Express in this quarter. Right now, looking at your leaders, Chris Commons, 12 points. Uh, 4 of 14 shooting isn't the best, but they've started to catch it on here lately. Uh, no one else on the Express over five points. They've been scoring by committee outside of Commons. Looking at the London Lightning, you've got 15 points from Stephen Maxwell, 12 points from Tyshawn Patterson, and seven and six from Warren Ward. He's actually been stuffing the stat sheet, adding in two assists. Uh, of course, Patterson at 6-1, surprisingly leading the Lightning in rebounds with seven. Uh, I don't think I would have had that one pegged before the game. Absolutely, and just a quick update. My apologies on the uh, Halifax Moncton game. Uh, of course, we're unable to watch the stream while we're streaming, but it's just coming across Twitter that Halifax has won that game, 108 to 101. So again, the Halifax Hurricanes, 108 Moncton Miracles, 101. Moncton go down to a record of 0-3 to start the year. Of course, they're uh, definitely a talented team. We saw them play uh, take on uh, St. John over the weekend, and definitely a very talented squad. Lots of good NBL uh, or NBA rather D League talent on that squad. Ball's in here. Jordan Widener takes possession. Jeremy Wise on the move. 6:50 on the clock. Wise off to Kevin LaSalle. He attempted a three earlier this quarter. Instead, they'll give it to Jordan Widener, who will finish it. And that's a good spot to take that shot, too. Anytime you take a corner three, that's the shortest three-pointer you can take, and Widener able to convert. That ball is blocked, but it will fall out of play. Six and a half on the game clock. Express ball, 17 seconds uh, on the shot clock. Again, the Express with a decent run in this third quarter. Definitely need the points. Ball's in here from Tony Jones's men. Singleton tries to cut underneath Posthumus, and that's going to be a foul against Posthumus. So that's his third foul of the game. Lightning's sixth of the quarter. Singleton comes into the or comes out of the game rather, and Jabs Newby comes in. London's actually been good about staying out of foul trouble so far. No one over two fouls, except for of course Posthumus just now. Chris Commons backs into LaSalle. Ball's up. No good. Posthumus collects. Jordan Widener with it. And they're gonna call a foul there. It looks like it's gonna be against Chris Commons just on the far side of half court. Yeah, it looked like it's an unsporting foul, too. I, I thought so. It looked like uh, LaSalle just sort of got pulled back there. As, uh, I'm not sure what Chris Commons was thinking, but that was not a very intelligent play. So Kevin LaSalle will go to the line here. Two shots. You see him getting ring there all alone on this near side. 58 to 44, the score remains 6-16 on the clock in the third. Yeah. 
second shot's good. Chris Common showing some very clear displeasure with that call. Not very happy. He's still talking about it. Uh, keep an eye on that as we go forward. Yeah, it just looked like he, he caught Kevin LaSalle's face or, or something higher up on his torso and went down. Well, it looked like he had his arm around chest level and they were sort of, you know, taking shots back and forth at each other. And I didn't think it was a vicious shot, but LaSalle hit a wet spot or something because he went down a little easier than you'd expect. Uh, it is an unsporting foul, but maybe not as bad as the, the name implies. Posmus with the ball up, it's good. Add another two points to the London Lightning's total, 61 to 44. Express trying to get the offense going once again. Adrian Moss with it. He's got Kirk Williams Jr. Masquerading for a screen. Ball's down low to Commons. Six seconds on the shot clock, he'll take it up. No good, collected by LaSalle. LaSalle. Running the court pretty nicely there. Bounce pass to Jeremy Wise, it's good! And one. Big and one play for the Lightning. The Express were clawing their way back into it. If Wise makes this one though, it's gonna be a big 20 point lead for the London Lightning. 524 remaining in the third quarter. These past couple minutes coming out of that Windsor timeout have actually been incredibly beneficial for London. A massive first two points for Jeremy Wise this game, possibly three, again, as he heads to the line. Meantime, Windsor making a change. Maurice Bolden coming in in replacement of Jabs Newby. Kevin LaSalle with a nice little impression of Magic Johnson on the uh, on the break there, dribbling around three defenders. Not exactly what you expect from your power forward. 64 to 44. London with the lead, Windsor with the ball. Shaq Keith with it. Bolden. Three points, five rebounds to his name as we see Kirk Williams Jr. getting underneath. And great defense there from Chad Posthumus. LaSalle with it. LaSalle is fired up. Wow. Takes it off to Widener. That one LaSalle drained uh, that early bucket. He started sprinting back across the other side of the court screaming and you see he was pumped up. That's Mustafa Jones missing that, but that was contested. That's a second air ball. He might want to stop that. Shaq Keith underneath, takes it up, it's good. Ooh, so he, he hit his head on the way down too. Shaq Keith popped right back up, good for him, but didn't look pretty. Good. Lightning might have hit their head though with that turnover. Good defense here as Windsor again, keep possession even after that play. Chris Commons was down on his knee, it looks like that's gonna be an offensive foul. A little bit of a mess here from Windsor and London. Uh, that is gonna be on Shaquille Keith who picks up his fourth foul with 4.31 left here in the third quarter. That's not exactly what you want to see from a guy who's been one of your leaders this year. Four and a half left in the game. Curtis Washington getting set to come in to replace Chad Posthumus. And Lightning get possession. Again, six fouls to their name, five to the Windsor Express. Jeremy Wise with it. A little bit of movement on the baseline. Widener, bounce pass, this is Maxwell. The refs blow that down for traveling. Maxwell, like any younger player, that's gonna come with experience. Uh, I think he's a, uh, I think he's a little pumped from that dunk earlier and he's just sort of attacking the rim whenever he can. Not exactly something you, you don't want to see, it's something you definitely want, but uh, he'll have to get a little under control. 4.15 on the clock. Adrian Moss. Off to Maurice Bolden, two former London Lightning players connect here. Why not, up to another, Raheem Singleton. Taking it across the arc as we see Adrian Moss coming across, trying to drain that two, it's no good. Curtis Washington with the rebound. Jeremy Wise. He's got Jones to his left and said it's gonna end up in Jordan Widener's hands. Widener along the baseline. And pass along, it'll fall out of play. London will keep possession, nine seconds on the shot clock. A little bit of a lucky break for London there. That was an ill-advised pass, but no hands on the Windsor Express team, unable to control that. Wise on the inbound, a very tall Theo Davis standing in his way. Wide open from Mustafa Jones, good! After two air balls, you better bury the third one in the London Lightning bench is loving it, jogging on spot. I don't know exactly what that celebration's about, but hey, they love it, I love it. Moss. 
kicks it into the corner. Raheem Singleton can't get the answer back three. 67 to 46. Wise. Washington in front of him and he's going to slow things down. Smart, you're up 21. Why not kill a bunch of clock here? The Express need to get something going on offense. 16 of 56 is just not a good shooting night. Jones likes to take it to Maxwell. Three seconds on the shot clock. It'll fall out of play off of Curtis Washington. So Windsor with possession. Maxwell's got to go up with that one. He actually had the positioning uh, just a little too fancy. Under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Moss gains a little bit of space off that aggressive pick from Theo Davis. Commons, lots of spinning there. Eventually gets it into Davis. Four seconds on the shot clock. And that'll go out off of London. So Express get possession with just two seconds on the shot clock. Timeout by the Windsor Express, 67 to 46. Marty Thompson, Chris Croucher up in the booth. Stefan Maxwell with the biggest play of the night, also with the biggest point total, sitting at 15 points. Uh, that's more than Chris Commons has for the Windsor Express, sitting at 12 points. It's a decent night for London, but uh, even as, as, as Bill Oven said at halftime, our uh, resident analyst said that, you know, London is, uh, it's an all right night for London, but it's definitely a worse night for the Windsor Express so far. Yeah, the Express really having difficulty, and the one that stands out is any time they get an extra possession, they have not been able to convert. Their second chance points are being outscored 12 to four. Their points off of turnovers are being outscored 14 to two. So just right there, you're swinging the game 26 to six simply on those extra possessions. You gotta be able to bury those shots when you get the opportunity to take an extra shot. So the Windsor Express just not doing a good enough job of converting. They're getting challenged very, very, very hard by the London Lightning on just about every shot. And they, they did it for a point in that quarter. For a point in that quarter, they started doing a good job of making that extra pass to get that open shot. But London's just taken that away again. And I gotta give Kyle Julius credit Every time there's a timeout, London comes out a new team. He's doing something with his adjustments. Or maybe they got Michael Jordan's secret stuff. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but they're, they're getting some really good performances out of the, whenever they take a timeout or whenever there's a break in play. Well, this brand new London Lightning team's on the floor. Here we go, Curtis Washington. Big slam from Curtis Washington. I'm not sure what the stop and play is, though. Ref's just blowing the whistle. Uh, not exactly sure what that was either. Singleton with possession, but uh, a massive play for the London Lightning coming out of the stoppage. Here's Davis, bounce pass in, and the refs are going to blow things down. Looks like it was something between uh, Maxwell and Chris Commons. It's going to go against Maxwell. Only a second in the game, though. London's actually done a good job. They've got just as many team fouls as uh, the Express, or at least close, but... None of their players really in any uh, any sort of a problematic state. Closest is Chad Postumus at three, but that's about it. And even on the Windsor side, it's uh, it's uh, Shane Ross, who we haven't seen uh, in quite some time, and also Chris Commons, both on three fouls. And also Shaquille Keith has four. Uh, Keith, obviously, uh, a, a pretty big talent. So Tony Jones having to make some adjustments. 2.16 on the clock in the third. We haven't seen much of Shaq Keith in this third either. You gotta think that's the foul situation playing in. Widener. Calling, taking a three, misses. Collected by Mobile. It's important here for London to just sort of stick to the fundamentals. You've got a big lead, you can't start going crazy. You just gotta keep doing what got you here. Uh, so far, so good, but just make sure London keeps doing that. Adrian Moss draws the foul. Minute 48, the foul goes against Widener. That's his third of the night. And of course, the London Lightning are over the limit, so Adrian Moss with a smart play gets to the line. Kirk Williams Jr. comes in to replace Chris Commons. Commons not exactly having the strongest night. Four of 17 shooting. Uh, he's got 13 points, five rebounds, three assists. It's not awful, but you definitely want to see that shooting number a little bit above four of 17. Moss drains the second one. 
make that seven points for him on the night. Mind you, part of Common's problems, I should give him some credit, is the reason he's taking so many shots is because Windsor's been down this whole game. He's just trying to get him back into it. So he's trying, but the rest of the team just not following suit, and Common's having troubles just making it. Ball is in here from London. Jeremy Wise with the veteran move, takes the ball across. Avoiding the full court press there from Windsor. Bounce pass into Maxwell. He's up against Kirk Williams Jr. Gets high, but can't get it to go. Bounce pass here to Adrian Moss. Windsor using their speed. Good play by Adrian Moss, two points for Windsor. I think the most surprising thing about that was 6-2 Jeremy Wise getting up, the up to the backboard. That was a impressive jump from the point guard. Here he is with possession here. Wait still Capers comes around on the near side. Now to Curtis Washington. Trying to back down Theo Davis. Now to Patterson, four seconds on the shot clock, a minute to go in the third. Great finish by Tyshawn Mr. Tyshawn Patterson. Patterson. Very, very tough shot, able to get it to go. He's been one of the best players for the Lightning at the start of this season and continues tonight. That's points number 14 for him. Mo Bolden for three. It's no good, collected by Theo Davis, a very comfortable offensive rebound on the near side. Adrian Moss can't get that one to go and the refs are gonna blow things down. Curtis Washington just erased that ball. London's gotta do another, uh, pardon me, keep doing a good job of staying calm, sticking with the fundamentals, making sure that they don't get a little too far ahead of themselves. Windsor, a very experienced team, not someone that you really wanna give any sort of a chance to get back into this. You just gotta sort of suffocate them on defense and make sure you can just simply put up enough points to keep this lead. Windsor looking to bring Shaq Keith into the game and also Shane Ross. So uh, Keith has four fouls his name and Ross has three fouls. Gotta keep you updated on that uh, as again as they come into the fray. Looks like Adrian Moss and uh, so looks like um, Theo Davis will be making way. And actually looks like there's a, oh, looks like the refs, uh, refs are actually calling for an inbound as opposed to uh, a shot from the line. So Wise with possession, bounce pass, Patterson takes it. Again, 30 seconds on the game clock, 18 seconds on the shot clock. Capers is in the corner. Raheem Singleton staring down Patterson. Patterson using his speed. It's stripped though. Here comes Shane Ross, bounce pass. Here's Kirk Williams Jr. It drops for him. Make it 71 to 52. Great play by Kirk Williams Jr. Him himself is a Mississauga Power graduate too. Jeremy Wise with it. Three seconds on the game clock. Shot clock has expired. Good! Jeremy Wise with a dagger at the end of the third quarter. Lightning 74, Express 52. Huge, huge shot from Jeremy Wise to continue growing this lead. Now sitting at 22 points. Windsor just doesn't have any answers. And if after three quarters of basketball, you only have 52 points, that's rough. They are having a horrible time trying to shoot the ball in London. They've really gotten hot. London shooting 42% from the field. Windsor only 27%. Windsor's also been trying to shoot threes to get themselves back in the game. However, it's not working. They are six of 27 from three point land. It's just not, not pretty for the Windsor Express right now. Part of it's ball movement. London 17 assists, Windsor nine assists. And we've even seen it here. Windsor not really making that extra pass to get that open shot. They're settling for jump shots that are heavily contested. Just not the type of shot you want to be taking if you're the Windsor Express. But they keep taking them, and this is where they are. 27% from the field, the Windsor Express are so far. My apologies, 29%. The stats are just updating uh, just updating for the end of the quarter right now. Um, I don't think I've ever seen that from any Express team at any point in any game. But again, 29% from the field. This is, uh, this is my third season doing color commentary. And I, I know Windsor's a better team than this, and this is probably one of the roughest outings we've seen from this team. I don't expect this to last, though. Again, 22-point difference right now. Windsor's got to just really come out and blow the gates off the hinges when they start this third, or pardon me, fourth quarter, because it's not looking pretty. 
And I mean, we've, we've seen early in this season that uh, the London Lightning have a bunch of very, very good performers, uh, individual performers on the defensive side. Chad Poskowitz has showed up big uh, in the preseason game especially, but uh, you've also got Capers, who likely will be playing this entire fourth quarter just because of his skill when it comes to playing defense. And I guess, you know, we talked a bit about it before, but what really makes Capers special is he's, he's kind of got the speed and the length to play defense all over the court. Well, his athleticism gives him the versatility that not many players have. He can defend uh, the four, the three, and the two. Uh, he's a very, very quick 6'5 guy, but his athleticism allows him to jump high enough and and really stand his ground against a bigger player. But it also allows him to keep up with the shooting guards. And there's certain point guards that I honestly believe he could cover. Capers has been having a great game on the defensive end. One of the things I worry about with the Windsor Express, though, is Adrian Moss is 3 of 9. Chris Commons 4 of 17. No one's really shooting well. If Moss and Commons aren't really going, Shaq Keith is in foul trouble. Who gets the ball? Who are you going to rely on to drag your team back in this? Raheem Singleton would be my pick. He's the closest thing they have to a to a streaky scorer like that because Moss isn't isn't getting it done right now, and Commons certainly isn't. Mo Bolden from distance, and he can't get it to go either. That's going to be too rough from Shaquille Keith. That'll be his fifth foul. Already, Shaquille Keith's probably going to be heading back to the bench, and. I worry about this game getting a little chippy if, as long as this lead continues to be this bad. I think Windsor's getting very frustrated, uh, and you have to hope everyone keeps their cool. Well, you talk about who do you give the ball to. Well, Adrian Moss, as we saw in that Orangeville game, 6 for 16. You know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You see a very athletic play there from Stephen Maxwell. Stephen Maxwell, just incredibly impressive for the London Lightning tonight. Uh, this is his first start. Uh, pardon me, second start, but first time he's ever gotten significant minutes because with Williamson out, Maxwell is kind of the guy at the three spot, and he's performed excellently in that role. Aaron pass there from Kirk Williams Jr., so London get the ball back a minute into this fourth quarter. Marty Thompson and Chris Croucher up in the booth. London keep possession. Patterson moves it across. Again, they're in no rush. Lightning with a 76-52 to 52 lead. LaSalle with some space, he'll pass it, a dart down low. It's missed there by Maxwell as he dropped the ball. Shane Ross, jumper, no good. 10.46 on the clock as London charged down the court. This is Patterson, it's swatted there by Shane Ross, but the refs blew things down before that. Shane Ross, I think, was uh, less about making the block and more about making the statement. He's trying to fire up his team with something right now because uh, the rest of the team just seems off. Adrian Moss and Chris Commons coming into the game here for London. Mo Bolden and Shane Ross making way. Ross does not seem too happy with that decision, but uh, still making his way to the bench. First shot's good from Patterson, 77-52. to And Patterson with a decent game, sitting at 15 points. He keeps possession as he ends up in uh, some fans' laps. And the play continues. What an incredible move as he threw it and, and almost went to you like he was sitting in a seat. And all of a sudden, right back up the court. I think you have to pay for those tickets, though. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Adrian Moss with possession. Five seconds on the shot clock. In the corner. This is Shaquille Keith. He gets it off in time, but it's not good. So London, get possession back. Marcus Capers finds Warren Ward. A little bit of space. He elects to run it across. Takes it up. It's good. Or sorry, my apologies. Not good. But the foul was called. He'll take a trip to the line. Well, it was good in terms of for the team <laughs> as he goes to the line to shoot to Warren Ward. Having a very good game for the London Lightning, despite the fact that we know uh, he's playing a little hurt. He wasn't able to play last night. And, of course, he's coming off an Achilles injury that took away the uh, back end of his 2014-15 season. Uh, he's sitting at seven points, seven rebounds. Uh, those seven rebounds actually second on the team uh, in the rebound category. And he's had a very solid veteran game for the London Lightning. Jamal McQueen coming into the game, and Shaq Keith is making way again. Keith with the five fouls so far, ten minutes to go in the fourth. I think at this point it... Uh, 
you want to put Shaq Keith in sooner rather than later and try to get this lead down before you worry about him fouling out. Because what's the point of holding him to the end if you're still down 20? I think you got to put him in. Uh, if he fouls out, he fouls out, but you got to do something to try and get this lead closer. Second shot's good there from Warren. Warren make it 79 to 52. McQueen takes it. Now off to Adrian Moss, and the refs are gonna blow things down. Looks like that's a call against the London Lightning. Yeah, Warren Ward just got his hand inside and gave a little slight push to the shoulder of Adrian Moss there. Uh, mostly Ward struggling with the speed of Adrian Moss, but again, who wouldn't? Very, very quick player. 15 seconds on the shot clock, Commons with it. Off to Raheem Singleton, takes it up. He'll be fouled. And the former London Lightning man will take a trip to the line. Chad Postmus getting set to come on for the London Lightning. I made a mistake. It was announced in the arena as five, but we're seeing on the stat sheet. And thank you, Justin Prince, for pointing it out in the comments to me. Uh, Shaquille Keith has actually fouled out. Uh, that's his sixth foul in the game. Yeah, thank you very much for pointing that out as we see Raheem Singleton at the line. First one's good. Again, 79 to 53. London with the lead. Singleton with his sixth and seventh point on the night. Two assists to his name as well. Now four for four from the line. Ward tries to dance around the former Lancer and Jamal McQueen. Two Canadians going at it. Steps around, tosses it up, no good. Collected here by Windsor. McQueen off to Moss. Commons in the face of Chad Possumus, can't get it to go. LaSalle can't collect. That's Kirk Williams Jr. putting it back. Kirk Williams Jr., a solid vet for the Windsor Express. And of course, he knows the NBL. This is his second year here, doing a very good job. Patterson. Warren Ward taking his time. A pretty relaxed thing there at the halfway line. That's no good. Adrian Moss collects. Eight and a half left. Singleton fouled by his former teammate, Kevin LaSalle. Looks like he landed funny. I think that's his left arm. Oh, uh, no, they're picking him up by it, so I hope it's not his left arm. Singleton uh, a little slow getting up. So Jordan Widener comes into the game, and it looks like Patterson's making way for London. Obviously, the Express haven't been shooting that well from the field, so shooting from the line seems to work. They're a bit better than that, 75% on the night. Singleton improves that percentage. You know, it's one of the things the Express haven't been doing in this game is getting to the line. They've actually been shooting very well, but only 16 attempts to London's 25. Second shot's good. 79 to 58. If you want an easy way back into this game, getting to the free throw line is one of the ways to do it. It slows down the game, uh, ends the clock, or pardon me, keeps the clock stopped. And uh, if you're London, you want to make sure that clock's ticking as long as possible. Fouls are really not helpful. Widener to Wise to Chad Possumus, the Winnipeg native. Up against Kirk Williams Jr. Can't get it to go, gets his own rebound though. Looks on the hook, it's good. Great play by Chad Possumus following up his own shot. Kind of just landed in his lap, but I'm sure he's not complaining. That'll give him 10 tonight. And uh, definitely a much better effort than we've seen as Kirk Williams makes a very nice play. Uh, to put that in, that's his seventh points, and he's going to go to the line for an extra shot. Exactly eight minutes to go in the game. As you see, Kirk Williams Jr. at the line here for two. 38 appearances with Windsor last year. That was after he was acquired in December. Widener with the bounce pass. It's tipped out of play. London will keep possession, though. 22 seconds on the shot clock. Again, these two teams will uh, will meet up again on Sunday here at Budweiser Gardens for a 2 p.m. start. We'll have it 
uh, right here on London Lightning's YouTube channel. We'll also have London versus Orangeville on Saturday. LaSalle takes it up, no good. Kept in here by Windsor, triple team there. And all of a sudden, lots of space up the court. This is Jamal McQueen to Chris Commons. They need points, they can't get it. Excellent, collects. excellent defense from Jordan Wiedner there. Literally just stood outside of the restricted zone, stuck his hands in the air, and it worked. All right, blow things down here as Fosmus and Kirk Williams Jr. help each other get up. Seven and a half left in this game at Budweiser Gardens, 81 to 60. So four fouls each. Again, as we approach the halfway mark of this final frame. Capers with the inbound, 17 seconds on the shot clock. And it goes right out of play. Windsor ball. Shout out the dude who uh, hit the ball there, his head straight for his date. And uh, he got the hand in there, make sure everything's okay. Nothing like uh, courtside seats for, for a first date. I don't want to say it was a first date. Unless, uh, you know, unless uh, uh, I believe that was Maxwell landed on your lap. In that case, that just, you know, makes you more interesting. Good news is that uh, the people that uh, that occurred to on the, on, on the near side here, they're good. Uh, looks like some medical staff came over. That's a traveling call on Kirk Williams Jr. As I'm talking about some person in the first row. 7.14 on the clock. 81 to 60. Inbound coming up here for the London Lightning in the form of Jeremy Wise. And the refs blow that down. That's Widener and Singleton going at it. And it's going to be foul against Singleton. So Singleton's third, and they try back up here. Nice pass. With a bit of space, he gets it to go. What a very, very smart and clever pass from Jeremy Wise. Everyone looking at the guards, that full court trap coming from the express. Chad Possumus, just like a tight end, right up the seam, uh, wide open. Jeremy Wise lays it right into the bread basket, and Possumus able to convert and one. Mo Bolden preparing to come on. Uh, looks like uh, Mama Queen's coming out, uh, and uh, Jabs Newby's coming in. Also, Raheem Singleton uh, making way for him there. Of course, uh, we've talked a bit about it before, but uh, Jabs Newby 0 for 2 in limited minutes against Orangeville, but uh, for Mississauga power player, waived by the Raptors 905 in November. Again, made that initial team. See Adrian Moss taking it up. 6.55 on the clock. 84 to 62. Capers with possession. Mo Bolden up at the top with him. Widener, Newby. Defending him. Possumus underneath. LaSalle with some space. He's going to take the three. No good. Oh, as you see, Adrian Moss can't quite keep possession as he lost the ball leaning over. London ball. Almost ended up in a familiar spot on the lightning bench there. Uh, he had a full head of steam. Luckily, there wasn't more bodies tumbling on that one. Again, a quick update. Uh, I guess the final update from the Halifax Moncton game. Again, the Hurricanes. Uh, beat the Miracles 108 to 101 as the only other game on the MBLC schedule tonight. Jordan Widener. Unbelievable stuff. He'll go to line here for two. Definitely his best game as a member of the London Lightning. He's been putting in some very good minutes. Those will be points number 10 and 11 for him. Widener again, not exactly known as a, a superstar in this league by any means. He had a solid but unspectacular rookie season. Except in the playoffs when he actually turned it on for the Mississauga Power, averaging 20 points per game during that time. He only averaged six during the season. And again, the former number one pick, definitely a guy to not overlook. Kirk Williams Jr. can't tip it in. Instead, he'll just keep possession, 6.23 on the clock. Mo Bolden, Adrian Moss, Jordan Widener with some decent defense there. Ball's up from Commons, and the refs are going to blow things down. So that's a foul against Kevin Lazelle, his fourth of the game. So Commons at the line here for two. And Windsor also have an interesting schedule. They've, uh, they're looking towards a very, very busy weekend. Orangeville, 
uh, in Orangeville on Friday. Then they're at home to Niagara on Saturday, and then they're in London on Sunday. So quite a bit of travel uh, coming up here for the Windsor Express. This is Kevin LaSalle taking that up. That's blocked there by Chris Commons. Looked so promising coming down the floor, ended in uh, not so good. Decent finish there from Kirk Williams Jr. under the net. We're now past half here in the fourth quarter of Budweiser Guard. Immediately, immediately after that Lozelle play, uh, substitutes coming in. I have a feeling Lozelle is one of the guys going off. This isn't really a time to go end to end. Jeremy Wise takes it up, but that's going to be a foul against Mo Bold and got his hand up pretty high there. Media timeout as we're past half here in the fourth quarter. Marty Thompson and Chris Croucher up in the booth. The London Lightning, very impressive, uh, especially uh, in this fourth quarter. Yeah, they've been doing a really good job of closing out here. They don't need to outscore the, the uh, Windsor Express. They simply need to keep up with them and pace themselves and go at the same pace as the Express. And that's exactly what they've done. 13 points each in this fourth quarter. Uh, the Lightning shooting 42% from the field. The Express, 30%. Uh, Three-pointers not going well for the Express either. They're shooting six for 30 for a 20% three-point percentage. That's just not going to cut it. Uh, the turnover battle still uh, around the same for both teams. 18 turnovers by Windsor, 17 turnovers by Lightning. However, I keep saying this stat, but it's a really big one. 18 turnovers for Windsor has resulted in 22 points for London. However, 17 turnovers for the Light er, by the Lightning has only resulted in four points by the Windsor Express. That's not going to do it. If you're going to take off, if you're going to get all these extra opportunities, uh, you got to convert on it. And again, if we count points off turnover and second ch chance points together, uh, you come to 36 points by the Lightning, 10 by the Express. They aren't taking advantage of their extra shots. The Lightning simply are. 87 to 65. Again, as you mentioned, Windsor's offense really Letting them down We're well into the fourth quarter. Again, that, that shooting percentage of theirs just up to 30%. It's just been crawling from about 24% all game. Slowly on average, they've been getting better. But definitely not good enough when the defending champion. It's almost mind-boggling just how the turnovers can be so identical and the points off of turnovers be so lopsided. 100%. Jeremy Wise at the line here for two. Already got six points to his name. And that's good. Five assists as well. That's tied with uh, Mr. Marcus Capers for the game high. Speaking of Capers' versatility there, leading the team in, a, in assists. Four points, six rebounds, five assists. And uh, very... Very solid game from the versatile forward guard. I don't know what you call him. He does everything. <laughs> guard slash forward slash utility. <laughs> I don't know if that's redundant He's or not. He's an athlete. <laughs> athlete who plays basketball. It's like in college football when they recruit a guy who has no position, they just call him an athlete. That's, that's where Marcus Capers fits in with the London Lightning. Kirk Williams Jr. with it. A bounce pass near the top to Mr. Adrian Moss. He's going to take a three. It's no good as the shot clock expired. Collected here by London, Jeremy Wise with possession. Just gonna slow this game to a crawl. Five minutes and eight seconds left. Jeremy Wise just making sure they use up as much time as they can. Patterson takes it, finds lots of space. It's swatted there by Jabs Newby. And now here come the Windsor Express. Can they get a bit of a run going? 4.53 on the clock. That's looked good from Adrian Moss. It's not, they're gonna call a foul like it was right under the rim, maybe in the key. Regardless, they're going to blow things down. So here's an interesting thing when you think about the Windsor Express roster compared to, to last year, is whenever Windsor got down, they usually were able to pick themselves up. Maybe the loss of Kevin Wazell even bigger than we thought. He's a fiery guy. We know he was one of the, one of the uh, leaders on that Express team. Uh, now he's with the London Lightning. You wonder how much his loss is actually affecting the Express, not necessarily on the court, but uh, in the huddle. 4.41 on the clock. 
That's a foul against Widener and the London Lightning. Widener's fourth of the night. So Jabs Newby goes to the line. 89 to 65. Both teams are at seven fouls at this point in the game, or this point in the quarter, rather, I should say. Second shot is no good from Newby, but good news. Windsor keep possession. Bolden takes it up. No good, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Certainly was a loud one. Wow. Glad to see everyone's okay, but Curtis Washington able to just get in front of Maurice Bolden. Bolden didn't really make any sort of adjustment to his body position. I know it's a hard thing to do when you're midair, but ends up being square into Curtis Washington. Lightning ball. Four and a half left. Jeremy Wise again, one of these veteran presences on this London team. Doing a very unveteran play there. Adrian Moss pretty quick to swat that ball out. And again, a fan in almost the same place gets introduced to some of the NBL's players. 14 seconds on the shot clock, 423 on the game clock in the fourth quarter. Jordan Widener getting set to inbound. Off to Patterson. He loses Adrian Moss for just a moment. Six seconds on the shot clock. Patterson needs to get this shot off. He's going to toss it off here to Maxwell. And there's not going to be enough time. I'm not sure Maxwell knew uh, that the shot clock was expiring there. No, definitely wasn't aware of exactly what time was on the clock. 4.07 on the clock now on the game clock. Newby tries to take it underneath, but that will likely be a foul against Mr. Curtis Washington. So Newby goes back to the line. Again, his wins are expressed down 89 to 66. Here is about four minutes to go in the fourth. So Newby sitting at uh, just one point. Of course, he's playing limited minutes. Only had one field goal attempt and hit limited minutes as well. Uh, in that game against Orangeville. And you know that he has quality, obviously, m making the Raptors 905 preliminary roster, the same roster that played London uh, and uh, and Windsor, or the same roster, part of that anyways. But um, it's interesting to see how uh, Tony Jones will incorporate him moving forward in, in because he's definitely a quality player, but right now just kind of operating on limited minutes. And it's hard to really factor him in when you've got Raheem Singleton uh, and you've got Adrian Moss and now Tony Bennett who is set to come back to this team come Friday. I'm going to have to look it up, but I believe Newby was a former second overall pick. That sounds, yes, he was definitely picked, uh, likely by the Mississauga Power, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, yeah, he was definitely a pick in this, uh, uh, definitely a pick in the league. Hey, Chris is going to look it up right now. Yeah, two years ago, not this year. I know that much. Yep, second overall pick uh, by the Windsor Express, a pick that was traded to St. John. And of course, uh, Jordan Widener went first in that draft. And Jamal McQueen went fifth. So we've actually got three of the top five picks in uh, the 2014 draft playing in this game. Second shot's good from Mr. Jeremy Wise, 91 to 68. Windsor with possession. Newby. Looks left. He's going to work around Kirk Williams Jr. Bit of a double team. The ball off to Williams, and now to Mo Bolden for three. Right over top of Jeremy Wise. It's good for three as Bolden uses his length to shoot over the point guard. He's going right after that point guard right there. Can't keep the ball in. And it looks like he stepped out of bounds when he had possession, likely, or maybe that ball went out of play. Regardless, uh, looks like it'll be London ball. So Wise getting set for another inbound again, Windsor. Applying the pressure here. 3.27 on the clock. See why he's moving a bit closer as uh, a staff member wipes down the floor. Tony Jones has a quick chat with the, uh, with the referee and we're back underway. Again, three and a half left in this fourth quarter. Collected very easily by Adrian Moss. He keeps possession. Now to Mo Bolden again for three. He's the hot hand, but he was going to airball that one. Kirk Williams Jr. tries to finish it, and he will. Very smooth stuff 
from Mr. Kirk Williams Jr. and Express again on a bit of a run. I know that worked out for Windsor, but they had Curtis Washington on the perimeter. Don't you want to take it outside and see if you can break him down a bit? Worked out in the end, but killed a lot of clock with that. Jeremy Wise. Off to Mustafa Jones. Back in this game, Jordan Widener. A couple three ball shooters ready to go here for London. There's a three from Mustafa Jones, heavily contested. Adrian Moss, very quick to give this off to Newby. Can he finish? He will not. That is stuffed by Jeremy Wise. Get that garbage out of here. That's my best Jack impression. I apologize. <laughs> but <laughs> they're calling a foul on that? Yeah, they're calling a foul. As the boos rain down here at Budweiser Gardens, they're not in agreement with it either, Chris. As uh, Chad Possumus is set to come on as well as Marcus Capers. Interesting decision by the referees, but I'm sure it was the right call. Newby back at the line. Bit of deja vu for the Windsor Express. Newby can add some points to Windsor's total here late. 2.43 on the clock. That second shot's good. So the refs are gonna blow things down here again. Just getting set for the inbound here, Wise. After uh, that foul, he's gonna take it off to Postumus. Lots of pressure here from Windsor again. Widener, bounce pass. Over here to Mustafa Jones. Right in front of the scorer's table, now down to Postumus on the baseline. Fired across, bit of space here for Wise. Bolden will approach. Pretty big lineup here for Windsor. They've got uh, Chris Commons. Bolden and Kirk Williams Jr. on the court. The refs will blow that down and it looks like it'll be Windsor ball on that 24 second violation. So 218 on the clock. Some fan really wants them to shoot the ball based on uh, what we could hear uh, from our arena mic. It's not a bad idea. Lightning just need to keep and maintain this lead. Commons goes for three once again and that's no good. He's four of 20 on the night. I was actually, yeah, I was looking for it. He's actually two for 10 <laughs> from beyond the arc. Two minutes to go, London with the lead. They've got the ball, Jordan Widener with it. Mustafa Jones takes it up for three and no good. Williams to Adrian Moss, now down to a minute 30. And London 91, Express 75. Kirk Williams Jr. slamming that one down. Wider, bounce pass, and that's gonna be too rough against Mr. Kirk Williams Jr. who's sprawled out on the floor right now. Looks like he's gonna be okay. I think he, uh, oh, yeah, he's gonna be okay. Uh, or no, he's limping. He's gonna take a shot though and stay in the game, so. Pardon me not taking shots, but go for the rebound there. Aishwan Patterson comes in. Jordan Weiner gets set at the line. So it looks like the London Lightning will be going up to a record of 2-1 and one early on in this season. Meantime, Windsor uh, are set to go down 0-2 to start the year. Again, with that loss to the Orange Villets, a very close loss uh, to the Orange Villets. Down to a record of 0-2. Jabs Newby takes that to the hoop. Decent defense there from Tyshawn Patterson. Keeps the Express to just 77 points. Capers. Mustafa Jones holds off. I know Possumus was down in the post calling for the ball there and still telling Jones he should have got it, but I like Jones' decision to pull it out and just sort of kill some clock instead. Patterson can't finish. Possumus can grab the rebound though. He'll take it up and it's good. Much better game from Chad Possum. That gives him 15 points tonight. Uh, very, very hard for any team to handle his size down low. Bolden floats that one up. Good for two. Maurice Bolden not having the best shooting night, but at eight points, he's definitely doing a little better than uh, we've seen here from him in years past with the Lightning. Brings the Express up to 27 points for the fourth quarter. Obviously improvement on their three previous quarters. Stoffus Jones 
Well, it's Patterson with a very athletic three-point attempt. Capers with a very athletic defensive rebound. Capers smart to kick it out. Only a one second difference between the game clock and the shot clock with 16 seconds to go. They're gonna hold on to the ball. Maybe throw one at the rim. The shot clock's still ticking. It looks like they're almost in sync, actually. Yeah, they're pretty close. As we see fans heading to the exits, looks like it won't matter. The refs will just blow this down. So, London Lightning, 95, Windsor Express, 79. I think Your the refs are talking oh. about whether or not they're gonna... No, they're gonna go off, okay. Um, 95 to 79, Windsor just simply didn't shoot enough, or pardon me, shoot well enough. 31% uh, from the field isn't gonna cut it, neither is seven for 35 from three point land. They did do a much better job of rebounding the ball. London led by a wide margin during the first half. However, in the second half, Windsor actually caught up to them. The rebounds ended up 54 to 52. One of the problems, one of the things that Windsor's going to have to talk about in the room is the fact that they generated 20 turnovers. They actually forced London into more turnovers than the Express had. However, the points off a of turnover, only eight for the Express and 22 for London. That is awful. They're going to need to work on making sure if they're going to get those extra possessions that the ball goes through the net. That is going to be huge for them going forward. And it's par probably the biggest reason why they failed to win this game. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Chris. So that'll just about wrap it up for us here at Budweiser Gardens. We'll be back on Saturday when the Orangeville A's come to town. That's a 7 p.m. start. Again, you can find us right here on the London Lightning YouTube channel. Meantime, these two teams will match up again on the Sunday afterwards at for, for rather a 2 p.m. start. So again, for Chris, myself, and everyone here uh, on the broadcast crew, thank you very much for tuning in. Final score, London 95, Windsor. 79.